This is such <laughs> this is such horseshit. It really is. The stop bullying thing. And, and she is waited too bullshit. long, man. That that was a hot topic two weeks ago. No this one cares Patrice. about bullying anymore. What's up, Patrice? No but one you, cares. Uh, so speak bullying. to us. Well, um, I just feel like it would be incredibly remiss of me to not say something. Um, I am incredibly disturbed and yes, you are. saddened by the oh. overwhelming number of uh, teen suicides that have been reported lately. Um, Late, how many? Of one? Bullying. Huh? Wasn't there one? There's not a lot of... Uh, teens in general are killing themselves. You not, know, just, not just the gay ones. Right, right. You know how many bullying-related suicides there have to be? It's got to be less... Then people that have vending machines fall on them. Like the shark thing? Yeah, like the shark thing. Yeah, Shark attacks, shark attacks. And more people are killed by look, vending machines falling on top of them every look, year. For the, for the families that have to deal with a kid that killed themselves, it's brutal and all that, obviously. Of but it's not an epidemic. No, it's, it's not it, even close to an epidemic. It's so low on the list of what celebrities should be uh, uh, hawking. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's a terrible day. And I'm not talking about any specific instance I'm just talking about overall the the problem of this type of bullying slash suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, sorry, I'm not seeing it as a, a grave issue here. There are 8,000 things that I would put in front of that. Yes. Shouldn't kids just be taught to have higher self-esteem and that way the bullying doesn't Shut bother them? Shut the fuck okay. up. You're right, you're right. It just... <laughs> It builds character. Hi, Patrice. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's digging it. I like Patrice just walking in. Good morning. You got the sleepy eyes. Oh, but I might. Yeah, I, <laughs> I had like a few minutes of, of REM sleep. Yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need. I was like, all right, I feel like right. All right. Yeah. Charge it up. Here, let's listen to Madonna talk about bullying. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, what I, that's what I walked voice. in. Yeah, a month. A I month. believe this is quite the... What's with that fucking voice? A month after all the other celebrities did it. This is all about just getting her face out there because, you know. Lady Gaga's People are starting to forget about Madonna. Taking reported her. lately um, because of bullying. I mean, suicide in general is disturbing. Teenagers committing suicide is extremely disturbing. But to hear that children, teenagers are taking their lives because they're being bullied in schools and dormitories what have you is is um kind of unfathomable and fathomable. i know a number of people have already spoken out about it but i feel like i need to say something um sing material girl incredibly supportive of too. me i wouldn't have a career if it weren't for the gay community so i, I you know and i have yeah the gays love the madonna She's trying no. to steal that from Gaga, Love too. Her. No, Lady Gaga stole all the gays yeah, away Madonna from Madonna. Never, no, Madonna never really admitted that the gays like her. I mean, Gaga really But Gaga did. took all the new gays. Yeah, but ever Madonna's since... probably still got the, the old stretched out balls gay yeah. guys now. Yeah. Oh, man, she is so jealous of Lady Gaga. Oh, is, is she a, ever? This is all about Lady Gaga. It has nothing to do with gays and bullying and, and teen suicide. Gaga ought to come out with uh, Cone... Bra tits. <laughs> yeah, and everybody would call her a genius. Made yeah. of meat. Meat oh, cone meat tits. Cones. Yeah, how is Madonna dressed? She was dressed uh, uh, conservatively. Yeah, that's her new thing, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I also, uh, I also have a teenage daughter, and yeah. I have ongoing discussions with her about oh, this, this topic. Why? You're... Bullying or lesbo sex? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? I don't, I Which don't one? <laughs> I don't think they brought up lesbo. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a lesbo. Why? I love the word lesbo. They're talking about... Why, um... why, why, why would she have this discussion with her daughter? Her daughter's set up for life. She has no problems. Her daughter's just a regular teen. Oh, is Could she Could be bullied really? on the internet. Could be bullied. Facebook. Uh, really? Yeah, you never know. About her eyebrows. They really? could bully her about her eyebrows. Hey, big eyebrow girl. And then she like she beats them up with, with stacks of thousands. <laughs> yeah. Just throwing them. Just, at, wads just of throwing money. St at, stacks of old Madonna CDs. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, Nobody's they're those. That are no. gathering a lot of dust because even Madonna's daughter is listening to Lady Gaga. Oh, <laughs> oh, man, how bad you imagine? That? Does that happen, you think? Madonna goes oh, upstairs yeah. to her room and she quickly shuts up. It's like, what were you playing? What was that? What was that? Lordis. And then she hits the button. <laughs> practicing her. Madonna's practicing her non-regional dialect. Yes. <laughs> her non-regional dialect. So everyone likes her. Exactly. It's unfathomable. <laughs> unfathomable. Is unfathomable. it unfathomable? 
All right, let's listen to Madonna <laughs> talking about bullying. This is yes. could be the best audio of the day. I have nice. ongoing discussions with her about this this topic. Mm. So I feel like um, I, I just need to say a few words. Yeah. It's important. Otherwise, the bullying continues. The bullying thing is the fucking, uh, the cause du jour. This is going to peter out faster than any other cause ever. Oh, yeah. Because you'll always have some type of bullying. Yeah. Why are kids now special? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What the fuck? When did that happen? Why are, we, why are we raising these bums? It's like in school there Isn't was, an, a, a, you, you call the kid a retard or an idiot. That's offensive. Or something, and now it's, you know, ADD. He's got some kind of problem. Uh, bullying was what happened. Uh, you come right. home crying. What happened? Uh, the, the kid fucking pushed me down in the yard, and then the father would go, "Well, you know what you do? You walk up to him, you punch him in the face. You punch him in the face, and he'll stop." Right. But and and and, and when we were growing up, there were you didn't know gays in school. Sometimes so you why? punch a bully and go away. So sometimes he doesn't go away. <laughs> so why weren't those kids killing themselves? Cause, yeah, because the gays we wasn't is, supposed to kill us. But the gays, yeah. the gays accepted now way more than when we were growing up. Was a motherfucker a, that scared me so much from from summer school when I was yeah. in the fifth grade? I go to summer school. Or the sixth grade, I I think I dug a tunnel like Vietnam <laughs> <laughs> to get from school <laughs> to home. I, was the fucking, scary I came out this fucking yeah. sewer to yeah. fucking escape this asshole. St Steve Oswald from Toronto writes, yeah. they better start lezzing out. Yeah, lezzing <laughs> out. Because he's bored that with the, uh, the interview on Ellen DeGeneres. So there's I... a kid in my school who used to call me over to pretend to tell me a secret and stick thumbtacks in my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! That explains Fuck everything. That, that oh. explains everything. There was this kid... It's too I bad just... you didn't kill yourself. Why? Oh, what? I never even considered it. There was a kid Seriously. in school, and I only knew his last name was Bohannon. And we used to make him... <laughs> Bohannon, that Bo sounds... Hey, Bohannon. Oh, we sound just call him Bohannon. And we used to make him uh, low crawl through mud puddles in the in the. <laughs> Why would you say his name? He's probably ah fuck crying. Him. He's probably putting fucking uh, that black ink under his eye right now. <laughs> he probably invented Twitter. You know he, how those uh, guys turn and, out. And he'd be low crawling, and and we'd just be laughing, and he's full of mud. <laughs> That's just, just, just bullying because because shit goes down, and I got oh, shit on, and, it, and and you'd have to. This was the lowest common denominator. When I was in I, fifth, it. Yeah, no, go ahead, fuck go fuck ahead, around. Sam. When I was in fifth grade, there was a new Spanish kid who didn't speak any English. That's good. So the they whole won't be class cool to him. at lunchtime spent the entire lunch period every day asking him <clears throat> embarrassing questions and getting him to say yes or no at the wrong times. Like, do you poop? <laughs> no. <laughs> He doesn't Until, you want uh, a bully, Sam? Uh, yeah. Oh, you can say it. <laughs> oh, what you kind can of totally say it. Until, Awful kid was a fucking bum enough. <laughs> weak enough to let Sam bully him. <laughs> right. And, Until seventh yeah. grade came when I guess we stopped talking to him, but he learned how to speak English. And I was walking out one day way after school with one of my friends. And uh, he went up to my friend, who was also in my fifth grade class, and grabbed him by the neck and started strangling him, yelling, I can speak English now. Holy I was, shit. I was out the door. Yeah, you can't, you can't, <laughs> can't bully that guy anymore. You no, I figured all that shit out. I remember Pat, uh, another one was Patrick Fullen. I'm talking about Patrick Fullen. Uh, yeah, we know, we know Patrick. <laughs> Patrick Fullen was a, a kid in school, and he was uh, like a big, fat kid. And oh, it, it, was, it was in elementary school, so he just got beat on all the time. And we realized he made a really funny face when you punched him in the stomach. <laughs> so he'd be up against the wall, like pinned against the wall, all scared, and everyone would just punch him in the stomach. And he, he'd make this face like, oh, like he was dry heaving or choking on something. And we'd all laugh. And then the next guy would punch him in the stomach, that's so in his fat up. stomach. That's why this bullying... It's just the way it is. It's, that's, that, it's, yeah. that's the way it is, and that's, it, that's it is. the way it'll always be. It's, but I, <laughs> I, think, I think the difference is that uh, you know we're raising a generation of fucking wimps. Yeah. I, so they I, can, can I beg they your pardon for just a second? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, certainly. Not to turn this racial. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 At least it was black, this time. Black kids ain't killing themselves over that shit. Right. This See? Is a, this is an epidemic Black because kids white kids kill can't, each can't fucking other survive. Over nothing. Over nothing, That's yes. That's right. <laughs> because we're... If we step on, uh, <laughs> I got brand new sneakers on today. If yes. you step on them, I'm going to stab you. You looked at me with we disrespect. Got, <laughs> we got no time. <laughs> we got no time for fucking mur killing ourselves. And bullying in the black community is just called robbery. It's just, <laughs> yeah. it's just you're robbing someone. I, There's financial gain to it. I go to World Star Hip Hop every day. 
There's a video every day of a fucking of a the entire projects fighting over <laughs> something ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> bitch! You you stole my weave appointment, <laughs> and his, his titties flying. Yeah, this is, it's it's a beatdown happening every day in the projects, man. Because uh, my weave appointment. <laughs> I would assume. Would be something. I would assume in the black community they're not raising wimps like they are in the white community. They are raising wimps. It's there just there are wimpy kids out there that can't handle this shit. There are that's some why, fucking that's wimps. That's why yeah. maybe the suicide mm. rate is up. It, Stop but it's, giving everyone a fucking trophy. Yeah. It's not no stop fucking this. When I grew up, it was it's either you win or you're either first place or last. Or last. There's right. no second. You no, just lost. No, right. You <laughs> just didn't want to be last. You didn't want to be last, but you, you, that was it. Remember? But now it doesn't matter if you're. It don't matter if you're last, Patrice. Bullying. Everyone gets a trophy. My mother would point and laugh at me sometimes. Just point and laugh. Yeah. This yeah. is you're hilariously you're, awful. You're bad at that. You're not fucking good. There, there are more things you're gonna suck at than be good at. That's for sure. I had a teacher that gave me an F minus. <laughs> you get an F minus because he said he. I might as well like. What's the difference? He really wanted to make it hurt. And my mother goes, you got an F minus. Like, <laughs> he made my life harder. Yeah. I go, mom's like, and no one believed. Nowadays, I wish I lived in the times where teachers were accountable for doing oh, fucked up kid things to students. Yeah, the, kid would be fi uh, the teacher would be fired. I had a second grade teacher that beat us with the pointing stick. Like, it was me and yeah. this kid named Wesley. She would bring us into the closet and the other kids would listen to us just get whacked. Holy shit. What? You could not possibly you get away They with that. beat the kids back then. Yeah, they beat yeah. kids back then. Yeah, and the, the teachers. teachers are, with impunity. They no just, suing. No. No uproar. Just beatings. And the parents usually were like, well, what were you doing? <laughs> yeah. What were Robbed you doing? Robbed during wrong? recess. It was brutal. I yeah. Think, yeah. I think people bully a lot, too, because they know, mm -hmm. you know, the kid's not going to hit back. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> If you hit a kid back, he's gonna stop fucking bullying. There was this now you gonna teach your son um, pugilism? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna uh, get my kid in uh, self defense classes immediately. MMA at fucking four, oh, yeah. just choking yeah. out other four year olds. <laughs> Whatever, man. The four year olds are tapping. I wish I knew that shit in in school, just to have it on my side. Fuck but you yeah. didn't get bullied because you had big family, right? It was the fucking Hughes's. They'll uh, fuck you up. Nah, yeah, the whole I, Hughes I got, clan. I certainly got bullied. I was a small kid. Yeah, I got bullied. I, and your whatever. brother looked like a fucking, like, he bit people when he fucking, yeah, he didn't Joe, look like he was a sucker. Joe, Joe didn't really get fucked with. No, you um, just. I didn't get fucked with that much, except uh, I remember this one black kid, Keith Green. <laughs> Keith of course Green, it was black. Yeah, kid. Would, would come up and uh, and and he he knew I was a mark. So he would just like be like, hey, yo, give me 50 cent. Give me 50, 50 cent. And I'd have to, you know, take a couple of quarters out and pay this motherfucker <laughs> off. And and you know what? He never laid a hand on me. I didn't learn that if I didn't give him money, he'd beat me up. I just get right from the start started paying him. Wow, well, I knew there's, better. There's nothing funnier than <laughs> trying out different theories of <laughs> of standing up to a bully yeah, and he can yeah. fight really well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up to your fucking yeah. assault on my blah blah. No, Keith Green, you're not getting did, fifty cent. Did you have the kids in school that would tell you they Ow. knew karate? And they were going to beat the shit out of you? Oh, yeah, Asian kids were... I, were I, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I was at a... I'm very scared of Asian kids uh, fighting. I, I, was, they, I, assume I, yeah, they all know. I, I was at a roller rink. Uh, remember that stupid roller rink on 25A <laughs> heading into Northport? Sure. I was there, and, I, and I, I, I did something wrong with this one kid, and he basically told me, look, I know karate, and when this is over... On roller skates? You know karate, goes, dummy? No, but then he goes, when this is over, I'm, I'm going to beat the shit out of you outside. <laughs> you were quaking in your drawers? But yeah, shaking, because, you know, I, we didn't have phones or nothing, so I just got to wait for my mom to fucking show up to pick me up. I was just a little fucker. As soon as this all <laughs> skate is done, Dude, I'm, I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah, I was out of my mind, because it was going to... Couples gonna, only? Yeah, yeah. You're getting your ass fucking handed to you. After green grass and high top is over. We're going at it. <laughs> That's yeah, you're so lucky it's couples only, motherfucker. Because I'd kick your ass if I wasn't going to be with my girl I was holding of, hands and skating. I, I was out of my mind with fear. He said it's going down after this whole thing's over. Oh. And then we go outside. There's no great end to the story. His mom showed up and he jumped in the car and said, you're lucky. He scared you. He scared the shit out of me yeah. by just saying he knew karate. I I'm like, I don't know how to... your little roller skates. <laughs> I can maybe wrestle the fucking kid. I don't know karate. You ever had a, I ain't gonna take this shit no more moment? Yeah. You just there, said fuck it? There were, there were these kids that used to get into this fucking karate kid-like karate stance. Right. In, in the uh, playground, if there would be a fight, 
The kid would get into that stance and win the fucking fight. Like the, the other kid that would walk it. away. Yeah, that was all, like, all you had to do. All right, we'll fuck you. That's what I'm getting at. Away. That's all you had to say. Like was all you had to do was, was like move your feet fast, put one hand up in front of you, and do this shit. Right. And, and ah, you just but, scared but everybody. Self defense now, or at least certain places. That's yeah. just that's just fighting is something you you pay to watch. Nah, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Athletes do. No, they if use a the Indiana Jones solution with the guy with the big machete. <laughs> yep, exactly. Some exactly. fucking guy stands and he's like, I really yeah. did you learn how to fight for no oh, reason, yeah. motherfucker? That's how about good. punch this bullet? Let me, <laughs> let me say hi to Mike in New York real fast. Mike! Hey! hey. Um, good morning, guys. Morning. I took, Anthony, you hit it right on the head. Uh, I told my seven-year-old daughter because... She would come home and say, oh, so-and-so pushed me down today. And this happened like three or four times. I finally told her at the dinner table in front of my wife, I said, you know what you do? You take this kid and you make sure everybody's watching and you punch him dead in the fucking face. Ah. I said, nobody will mess with you again. Okay? Because I did that in, in uh, like, middle school, um, which it's funny you bring up a uh, roller skating rink. <laughs> <laughs> because it all started at a roller skating rink. I was hitting on this guy's girlfriend. Yeah, it shows and, my uh, age, obviously, but fuck, well, that's where you socialized. But he got pissed off, and he, he told me, oh, wait till Monday. <laughs> Monday rolls around, we go outside, and he's pushing me around. <laughs> but I didn't like the fight. He's pushing me around and all that, and finally, the fucking switch went on, and I... Shut up, me. motherfucker. Give me your money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Give me your yeah, fucking but, money. But I'm Shut the you. fuck up and send your wallet in the mail, nigga. <laughs> but I'm telling you, he told his daughter to punch this person in the face, and, and she wasn't bullied anymore, right? <laughs> My, my, but there's a culture in schools right now that you're not allowed to fucking touch another student, and that's why this bullying is happening. Oh, oh, but you're allowed to bully, though. That, that's I know. Right. So fucking you're punch not, the kid in the face. You're not hearing My kid will be a punch a, a kid in the, in the, in the face, face type of kid. kid. Yes. My, my, you sure even in, in, uh, during like, the ex expulsion, like, you know, you punch him in the fucking mouth, we'll get you in another school or whatever. Yeah, school, yeah, whatever. My, no, fuck it. My, whatever. I'm not, I, I really don't want to raise a wimpy kid. I see it I happening all daughter. over the fucking place, and I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna. I don't know how I'm gonna get past it, but I don't want to raise a wimpy kid, man. But are you? Te are, are people teaching their kids to bully? I, well, like I, are people saying, "Go ahead and just terrorize other children." <laughs> I think the bullying yeah, is happening. If you want to have a serious, I think the bullying is happening because these bullies know nothing could happen. But to it's always them in happened. Return. It's always fucking. Yeah, happened. but that's. You're but, not gonna change the psychology of a fucking human. Uh, ch child, right. it, it, there's there's many dynamics to a, a kid. W one can be a fucking wimpy pussy. The other kid's gonna go to school and for <clears> no <throat> reason whatsoever start bullying around other kids. It's part of fucking what what they do. But if you but know, but people? if you know, there's no consequences. It's easier to bully a kid if you know that kid's not gonna fucking you know hit you back. But there always was that consequence back in the day. That's or what I'm saying. They That's got hit or they didn't get hit. You just took care of it yeah. uh, among um, so how among does it yourselves? become a movement where it gets stuck? Like what happens where it's a couple like of people kill themselves and all of a sudden it becomes this thing like oh they were bullied. First of all, the the, the gay kid that jumped off the bridge it wasn't even a bullying incident. It was not a bullying incident. He just wasn't it ready was to come prank. out the closet. Yeah. yeah, it was a prank that went horribly, that went wrong. horribly uh, wrong. We pull but, pranks like, oh, like crazy pranks like that all the time. That they one have, unfortunately went horribly wrong. It yeah. sucks. They factored in psychological torment into the bullying thing. Oh, so, is that bullying now? Psycho is yeah. it I felt so meld? bad for that fucking kid. Yeah. But look at man. I, I shook a douchebag's hand yesterday at the fucking <laughs> at the Best Buy. He tweets. He just tweets. Hey, Patrice said Best Buy buying. I just like I go. What, what if I just lied to my girl oh, <laughs> about oh, where? Shit. I, what, like, what? You just you oh you you. I got a divorce. <laughs> like, what the fuck you doing? Like, I think it's just we don't have any. It's no common sense. Right. And right, right. there's no code. There's something. This is bitch's fault. It's something. <laughs> there's no code to dudes for something. Like, we would we do that. We're, we're like just that. Yeah, yappy, yeah. kind of stop it, kind of no no one's scared no guy of getting code. punched in the fucking face. Like, yeah. a guy like uh, uh, like uh, Randy Couture, he, he has to live his life just as a professional. He has to fight other guys who go, look, this is what I do for a living. You do this, let's fight. But there's no consequence of getting your fucking head your ass bashed in you for ratting for somebody being a fucking out asshole. Or, or we, we are telling everybody where you are. The fuck is that about? But that's what I'm saying. There's no. Yeah. It's like no one taught this dude 
to just be cool. Yeah. Like motherfuckers is uncool, but it's a it's a it's the co it's it's opening your mouth mm. with no consequence. There's the me, yeah. me, the internet saying, "Hey, hey, fuck you, douchebag, fucker." Oh, you could be and the baddest. You block ass. them, but yeah. that's blocking is like should have been punching you in the mouth back then. <laughs> yes, that's blocking somebody's uh, text that came out of their mouth. <laughs> but and it's just so arbitrary. Yeah. So it's like you know you get a lot of fucking tough guys. Who, who aren't men of the streets, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, women don't deal with violence on a regular anyway. That's why they always yapping. But dudes <laughs> should at least have the threat of fucking of getting, getting your thrown fucking, through something. Yeah, your, your face up. punched. All right, listen, here's uh, part two of Madonna talking oh. about bullying on Ellen DeGeneres. War. And like I said, this is all about Lady Gaga being really, really famous now. And Madonna needed some exposure. Were you bullied as a kid, or did you feel uh, different than other people when you were younger? Um, yes, that would, that's an understatement. Oh, <laughs> I, I still feel different. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can totally re relate to the idea of feeling isolated and alienated. I bet you she doesn't even what? have an example of uh, bullying she when she was, was growing up. She has no Shut fucking up. bullying she stories. She was different. She didn't fit in. She wasn't different. She was just like every other fucking... She was special. But didn't you like Ugh. didn't you like being the different one in school? I didn't want to be like everyone else. No, you didn't. Nah, yeah, nah. nah. Let's let's be honest. You, you don't, don't want to be, be, yeah, yeah, you, you don't want to be different to the point where you're getting fucking made fun of. That's for sure. You were you if I you was if you was if you had a had a, a, a sense of individual, th th you you I lost like that. Though. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. why I flunked throughout school. I was just trying to be cool. No, you had to be with a cr with some kind of crowd. You had to yeah. be with some. It's like prison. You got to be yeah. with a gang. That's why peer pressure. Peer pressure is more peer pressure. Worse it's more bullying. of an issue than bullying. Worse than bullying. Mm -hmm. It's just being a whack fucker who doesn't. It's not your who doesn't follow enemies. your own fucking it's path. It's your friends. Right. It's you're not your enemies. It's your friends telling you to do something man. that'll fuck you up more than a bully will. Yeah, man, make funny and you know. Yeah. And alienated. I was incredibly um, lonely as a as a child, as a teenager, and I have to say, I never felt like I fit in at school. I, I wasn't a jock. I wasn't an intellectual. There was no group that I felt a part of. I just felt like a weirdo. And it wasn't until my ballet teacher, who who was also yeah, I, oh, she's going to ballet class. We're supposed to feel sorry for young Madonna. Madonna. This is what led her Stop to it. become the person she is today. She's pretty much a billionaire because because uh. uh, she was different than everybody in else. In the locker room, I had my big <clears throat> hairy bush uh, that was made fun of because it looked like sweater. And no one would les out with me. Yes, <laughs> but Very that was fucking what was supposed to be happening. Yes, in school. that's what happened. There was natural Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And natural fucking uh, audience. Mm -hmm. There was there was the jocks. Yeah. There was drug dealers. There was fucking M Mick Peterson, the tough guy who yeah. wore a leather jacket and no one fuck with. There were band fags it, and it, drama it, fags. It was and, no, and but I'm saying those. I'm naming the, the a crowd of yeah, people yeah. who the rest of the fucking school watched be Hollywood. They were the celebrities. And it was like TMZ. And you and the, <laughs> and the Madonnas of the world would have to sit back and and fucking watch those people be Hollywood. But no comments. They yeah, just yeah. have to sit there and be fucking the B and the C and the D crowd and <laughs> shut the fuck up. While they watched the football guys get attention. The pretty girls got attention. Funny guys got attention. And fucking everyone yeah, yeah. else got nothing they were the audience and mm. that was what it was supposed to fucking be mm. so the lady gaga's who want all the other kids to be protected they're going against the fucking code of how they got big they yeah. used to watch how of there's course. some girl that madonna used to watch and go i want to be like fucking cindy mcgillicuddy <laughs> that's why <laughs> that's why she got big shoulders and she's in shape and she yeah, sings yeah. songs She's copying some chick who was a star. Yep. She just made the move and Back Cindy in. didn't. Cindy's a fat cunt now. <laughs> and Madonna's... Because Cindy was the shit. Yeah. It is what yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. every fucking child should be... Have an opportunity. It, it, it's, it's fucked up that, that school is supposed to be... More, more so than teaching you the basics of uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic. It is supposed to be this thing that teaches you how to... Fit into to a society. Survive. Yeah, to survive. Not even fit in. Survive. 
Yeah. Well, well, that's just it. It, it, it. There's going to be people during life in the working world that are bullies. Maybe they don't fucking come up and punch you in the face every day, but they fuck with you on a business level. You're either a zombie day. or the guy sleeping <laughs> in the tank. <laughs> yeah. uh, here's the rest of the clip. My ballet show. teacher, who, yeah. who was also gay, took me under his wing. Was he? And wow. introduced me to a community of artists of other unique individuals who told me that it was good and okay. The, the ex-whores. <laughs> he introduced her to lesbo the parties. The <laughs> Yeah, they took her to the special school. Went to the special school ran by... Gay Professor X. Javier fucking... <laughs> this is some after-school oh, shit. She's shit. talking about lesbo parties. Uh, what is she talking about? Magneto is a bully. <laughs> I don't like Magneto. Mag panties. He has the power. <laughs> <laughs> to make my clit show through my drawers. Of other unique individuals who told me that it was good and okay to be different, who um, brought me to my first gay disco and ironically made me feel like I, I was a part of the world and that oh. it was okay to be different. And sense. I can't imagine young kids today going through their adolescent years not having somebody that they can talk to, Take them to somebody that they can have an affinity <laughs> with that tells them and arrested. reassures them that it's okay <laughs> yeah. to be who yeah. they are. How great is that? That's that's kind of my point. Now, yeah, if you yeah. have a teacher that realizes, wow, there's some gay kids and stuff, i got to take them to a gay disco. Let me disco. take them to a gay oh disco. God, would be so yeah. fucking in jail. Uproar. Right. That's what I'm getting at, though. She had... Nothing, by the way. No, she, she had nothing needed, there. She, she had to talk about it. She had to get on and talk about bullying without, with nary an example no. of any bullying that went on with her. Has she her ever admitted that she's anybody. gay or no, 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 no. That, that sounded like she was admitting she was gay. No, up. she's a friend of the gay community. Yeah, but she was hanging out at gay discos. I mean, she might have gone to a gay. Who hasn't gone to a gay club? Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> hmm. The freedom that gave. Uh, oh. Why is she doing that? Just a friend of the community. All right, well, there yeah. you go. Enough about the bullying. The gays have. Uh, Let it be known, uh, by the way. Nice. A lot of parents on the phones right now saying, yeah, my kid was bullied. I told him to hit the fucking kid. Guess what? <clears throat> my kid's not being bullied anymore. Well, don't they there's think there's a bunch of them? I don't have, we don't have time <clears throat> for them. Isn't and there something to be said about positive reinforcement? No. No. Oh. It's stupid. It doesn't work. We're, so my we're, we're fucking cavemen. I told my girl's kid, paint her, because she's not getting bullied, but it's like she, she hangs out with the, she's a, a, a ostracizer, because she's really pretty. Oh, yeah? She's tall, right? Uh -oh. So she hangs out with the pretty and tall girls, yeah. and, they, and they go, they do a merry-go-round of, of who gets ostracized from the pretty crew that day. <laughs> so she's just like, what am I going to do? I've been told to leave the crew because I'm the only one that doesn't have a fucking boyfriend. I said, paint. I said, you see how you paint your nails? Paint the middle one fucking a different color and just stick it up right now. Just stick him up when they said he can't hang out. I said, fuck you. Who are you? Can't hang out with your but, yeah. but I said, it's your fault, too. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm not giving us some fucking. I'm yeah. saying you're an asshole, too, because you treat. There's people who really <clears throat> want to be around you and like you. But you treat them like shit because they're funny looking. Yeah. You don't have any ugly friends, so you're one of them too. You're a dirty, rotten piece of garbage like them. <laughs> Gotta get some ugly friends. Yeah, there's some. There's a f little fat girl that desperately wants to play Dolly with you, you there's asshole. There's been so many movies made of that subject. It's like, show one of those movies. <laughs> See, that's your life. You're these cunty girls, and the fat girl there, they, you do the makeover on later and invite her in. Oh, you've seen Mean Girls, have you? Yeah, exactly. Oh, so, <laughs> Every hey, one of them. How about... <laughs> pretty and pink. Yeah. How about the good-looking guy that dates Miss Fatface <laughs> and then really falls in love with then? Really? Yeah, yeah. How about do the reality of that? Go, ah, uh -huh. Never <laughs> He fucks her, dumps her, and she kills herself. And she jumps in front of the train <laughs> at fucking Linden Station uh, at the fucking Jersey train. <laughs> that was that not believable fucking Queen Latifah movie where she f falls in love with the basketball player. Oh, what in love. the fuck? <laughs> that was that? fucking happen. Common. What was it called? I didn't see the movie, but I saw the trailer. I felt oh, like I saw the movie. Bullshit. Because they give away oh, the whole movie. Man, now. what the fuck? It was in and out of theaters, but all of a sudden she's an agent or something, and she's uh, the basketball player gets hurt, I think, and she helps him get it's better. Common. It's common. Yeah. Common would never go out with Latifah. That's you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I'm a Latifah fucking not. supporter, but he would never go because that's not guys. 
No, that's Common not would nice. never. He goes out with fucking no. um, supermodels. S- what, not Ser- Serena. Waist. He'll fuck with Serena, but she because she Serena got Serena Williams. Yeah, he fucks with her sometimes, but she got that's the greatest ass Latifah. on planet. What? Okay. what did you just say? That's Serena worth- Williams. Come on, Jeez. man, stop! Don't even just say nothing with that I'm, kind of pride. I, I'm not. Serena Williams. <laughs> I'm not trying to be shocking. Her, her grill is is Serena um, Williams is dodgy. <laughs> She's dodgy, but she is she way has too the body. Uh, exactly. You fucking no, no, man. I love fucking Serena white Williams. boy. You're scared to death of that Amazon. Oh my god. Of course you are. You probably wouldn't fuck that Sando Bergman from Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> Latifah. That fucking hot bitch. Latifah, a little, a little easier than uh, what? Serena. What? A little softer? Come on, man. Stop playing. Look at that. Stop playing, man. Did you just flip that to me as if, what, I'm going to be shocked? I'm st- oh, you like that? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. good, Danny. All right, I was nervous. Danny likes oh, that. Danny's good boy, totally man. Good the, fucking uh, man, Danny. Let me see Latifah. Maybe What's I'm, the matter with you, man? Let me, uh, maybe, I'm a make, make, maybe I'm making a mistake. I told you you had black fans on this show. You're losing them by the fucking thousands <laughs> right now. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, oh, right. God. Okay, you know what? Come on. <laughs> Why do y'all always right, show right. fucking <laughs> moose.com? Why don't you show when she fucking got a girdle on, you pieces of shit? All right, you know what? Every picture that comes up. <laughs> You just, you just uh, shut me down, Patrice. You just shut me down. She looks like, what's his name? The janitor from Good Times. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> fucking Bookman. Dude, there you go. It's not even close. Oh, Serena God. Williams over Latifah. Serena, I, have to I be, mean, her, I, her, made her, grill, <laughs> I made a mistake. Her grill Her grill is not the greatest in the world, but that body, man, everybody's k- killing well, their brother. Why don't you put Latifah's uh, face on her body? Then you got fucking you got glory, right? You got glory. Yeah. Uh, hey, what is this? What is this? Latifah, what is this yeah. that you gave me as we go to break here? Well, I was also going to say, you know, Brett Radner's been romantically linked to Serena Williams. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's good. Fucking interesting. He's going to be Brett, in the studio today. But He's, Brett Radner used to direct uh, black music videos, so yes. he he yeah. he probably he knows he that knows, world. He knows that well, world. We're going to talk to oh, Brett yeah. Radner next, but uh, oh the God, new movie the Skyline. Toilet? What's this uh, bumbling thing? It's a bumbling Oaf's interpretation of the Situations book. It's a new production piece. Oh, like a little uh, book on tape thing? Yeah, but then also with an interpretation. With an interpretation? Yes. All right, let's check this out. <laughs> Big Mama Prod's in studio today. <laughs> Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill in studio. We're talking about the McRibs during yes, the break. Yes, of course. <laughs> Patrice had a battle on his hands yesterday. He oh. wanted two McRibs, right? Oh, I, 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 I it's a fucking one, though. I won. You won out. You I won. I'm, I'm so proud you won of myself. This time. <laughs> I won that time, boy. But that McRib was calling me. I don't yeah. know why. Boy, the McDonald's commercials really are catering to the black man when it comes to the McRib, too. Oh, it's delicious. It's like they threw in one white guy and one Asian, I noticed. He's just like, the, the, the white guy's like, oh, McRib. And the Asian guy is eating it. But they show like 20 black people just going, Oh, damn! And then the last one is a fuck, just a big black dude. This guy like, is licking his fingers. He's licking up to his wrist. His whole hand is yeah. in his mouth. I said, I'm, I'm a this. fucking up, man. <laughs> hey, Brett Ratner in studio. Uh, know, We're Brett. talking about the McRibs real fast. Yeah, fuck oh, McRibs. And, and, it's we'll... not, and it's not meat. What no, is no, it? No. It's just some delicious They ought to do a how it's substitute. made. You know, show how it's made. They ought to do it on the McRib. I'd love to see. There's got to be info on the internet. Because <laughs> you know someone's not at McDonald's, wherever they get the food, slicing pork loin, you know, and fucking uh, uh, delicately yeah. uh, cooking yep, it. Yep, that yep. is a molded piece of liquefied pork product. <laughs> With, with like, uh, packing oh. peanuts mixed into an auger. And it's a stamp. They're I mean, just yeah, stamping and they those stamp things out, out. In a tool and To make dye, it look like a rib. Like, like they make car parts. <laughs> yeah. They're just fucking stamping that shit out, and then they cover it with deliciousness face, you barbecue sauce. About this Brett's like, I haven't been at McDonald's since hey, I was 12 years old. Yeah, I know, Good to see you again, man, Brett. <laughs> Brett Radner, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I can't hear anything. You uh, can't hear yeah. nothing? You all right, what man? The hell, the headphones pull out of something. Oh, there you go. Good. Ah, there it is. Ooh, that sounds yeah. good. Now you can hear all the good shit that's going on in here today. <laughs> I'm, I'm a McDonald's French fries guy. Oh, the fries? Yeah. Yeah, but I love Burger King for breakfast. For breakfast? <laughs> wow, that's fucked up. <laughs> can't imagine that. Wait, a sandwich. Wait, wait, Patrice looked yeah. at him like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, because, I don't even um, know what that meant. Uh, McDonald's has nothing that competes. Matter of fact, Burger King McMuffin? has a new McMuffin, but they call it the Berg Muffin, and it's delicious. <laughs> Berg Muffin, what a much, rip off. Much th- better done than I the I thought you were Egg eating McMuffin. better. No, I, this is from years of okay, bad food, right, nigga. Right. <laughs> you know. It's like a junkie knowing the best heroin. <laughs> my, my favorite burger of all of them is Wendy's, I gotta say. Went. 
Yeah, the Wendy's burger. That, yeah, shit, yeah. I know that. You know what, though? No onions, though. You've dealt with black people your fucking yeah. half your life. Yeah. That's <laughs> why. Black yeah. people, Wendy's. My whole life, Wendy's was, is a good show. And if, you, if you're if you in a pinch, Burger King is is, uh, is yeah. decent, too. And now McDonald's is like, their commercials completely cater to black people. Because they're trying to get black people to buy. Black but people they ain't do a super good McDonald's, job, I think. I really think black people go to McDonald's well, a lot Nah, more. man, we fuck with Wendy's. Yeah. And we fuck with Burger King. There's no Wendy's around. Uh, yeah, so they're they're trying to get uh, some customers away from those two places. That's why by McDonald's doing jazzy McDonald's. Oh, McDonald's! Oh, just gonna play the jazz music and things like that. Come in for the McRib sandwich. <laughs> the guy with the jazzy buttons. <laughs> Brett Reiner's like, I got up early for this horse shit. <laughs> we're talking about fast food. And it's a car full Instead of black of people. Movie? Yeah. It's a car full of black people and the kids are well behaved. <laughs> if you're good, you can... Man. <laughs> do, do, do black people like aliens? Oh, yeah, I think oh, they do. The that's... movie Aliens. No, just Aliens. <laughs> aliens in, in general. In general, do we believe yeah. in aliens? No, do you like eight movies with aliens in it? Mm. You know what? Yes, yeah. I would. I, would of course. Yeah, I don't think, that's, I don't think that's fringe. And look how Skyline. And look, now we're talking about Skyline. 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 Oh, you directed Skyline. A, a Skyline? No, no, I produced it. You produced Skyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The kid from um what from uh, uh he was in he was in uh the the uh, remake of um of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes. But then he he fucking I was nervous about him for a second. It's not about him though. It's about the aliens. Though. It's about the aliens <laughs> yeah. that that. But he's in it. He has he's a recognizable face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's the human in it. <laughs> the but, human. Well, there's a lot of them, right? <laughs> a few humans, but the aliens are. There's a lot of aliens. We were talking about the CGI, man. Uh, it looks yeah. amazing. The trailers it's for just this movie are ridiculous. Looks crazy. Now, what are these guys doing? These aliens? I'm trying to figure this movie out. Well, I'll tell you. They uh, they're invading the Earth. They're very angry. They're pissed off. Why are you being yeah. coy about it? <laughs> the fuck is the top so secret? I want to know. What are they doing? Want people to see the movie. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute, though. But I'm talking about what we you all. see. You see the guys go, don't look at him in the face. This is shit I already know it, from the trailer. Don't look at him in the face. Don't They're look at you. question. You're driving down the street. There's an accident on the side of the road. The ambulance is. Is there one person that's not going to go, oh, my God, look at that over there. Everybody's uh, going to look. What? I don't look. I look at the guy in front of me. And if I see brake lights, I get on my horn. I'm like, move, but you son of a... Most people are going to look. So these yeah. aliens are out there. They're coming. They're now, may I ask, is it an, it's an attack movie or is it a, or is it a kidnapping oh, movie? Oh, it's an attack movie. It's an attack and a kidnapping. Okay. Oh, shit. All right. Really? And, and you found Dan Rather, which is weird. Yeah. There he is right there. Hey, look at that. Good old Dan Rather doing the news reports for Skyline. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great I looking. It's, it's, it's giving it me that amazing. feeling that uh, Independence Day gave me yeah, when I, yeah, back yeah. in the day when I my except, Strauss. Except this was done independently. Like, literally, these two guys called the Brothers Strauss. I wish I, wish I had a, the Brothers Ratner so I could put some of the blame <laughs> the, on my brother. Is the Matrix <laughs> No, it's the guys who directed Alien vs. Predator. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay? Oh, okay. And they, um, they're, they're visual effects gurus. And they did, I met them because they did X-Men The Last Stand for It me. is ridiculous, mm -hmm. yeah. the visual effects. And they did uh, Benjamin Button. They're incredible. And these guys did this all on their computer. Like, literally, they shot this movie, like, in 20-something days with no money in their own apartment. Ah. There were no trailers. <laughs> I here. swear to God. This is their building where they live. In The whole movie takes place in that building. All of a sudden... They brought out the goods. I mean, these guys. When I saw, you know, they they they're, they're really good friends. It is amazing what you. It's you mind can blowing. Do. It uh, is. It looks like a big budget uh, film, and Look it costs up. nothing. How much is nothing? You want the truth? Yeah. All in? Yeah. Ten million dollars. Jesus. The movie Christ. looks like and it cost one hundred and fifty oh, million. Oh yeah, it sure yeah. does. It look. It's a. Is it's that the, one of those is, giant was that it, Danny? Skeleton. That's the only thing out. That how, 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 how excited no, are you, Brett? Uh, I can't. I'm You're just gonna happy, make a I'm happy to be, off this. I'm happy just to be a part of it. <laughs> you know, I got jealous. I, I I I was about to direct Superman years ago. Right. J J Abrams wrote it for me. He was like my writer. All of a sudden, huh. he's directing Mission Impossible. He's got all these big movies. I'm like, damn, I, I've been, what have I been sleeping? <laughs> hey, I was spoiled with Rush Hour with Chris Tucker. Him and I the were The Brandon just Roth Superman you was going to do? No. Yeah, the well, well, I mean, before I, that. I know. You, yeah. That was supposed to be that, yeah. that one. And, this, uh, is, this is all on a computer. All, it's unbelievable. With these, really? these guys, I'm not kidding, are geniuses. I mean, they did every. I mean, they, did, they, they, they did Avatar, I mean, visual effects stuff. And that. These guys are brilliant. They, and actually, their first movie, I think, was with Jim Cameron when they were like 19 years old. Mm. They're basically computer geeks, but they're yeah. brilliant. Why not in 3D, sir? Oh, come on. Um, 3D's taking over the world. I think the sequel will probably Cost be 3D. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the money for 3D on this one. You can tell they're really good at, with Microsoft Paint. Yeah. That seems to be what they uh, use for the visual <laughs> yeah, effects. Okay. It's a, but what's no, cool is, I mean, the visual effects course. are mind-blowing, but it's a great story. It's a character-driven film, and I think it's, it's a movie that you go in there and... 
I don't think you even. I mean, the story matters. Obviously, we're we're there to watch the story and to care about the characters. But you're going to be blown so away watching the ships. the visual effects are mind blowing. I mean, literally yeah. mind blowing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you feel like it's happening around the world. I mean, these guys are like, and I'm watching these, the footage as they're shooting, and I'm going, God, you know, not imagining what it's going to be. I know, the, I know, you know, the, the design and the creature and everything, and then all of a sudden, these guys are visionaries. Yeah, I mean, these, there's something else going on here. There, there's the aliens, which is great. You know, the the machines, the friggin' black the scrubs. Is that I see, you know? But then yeah. there's something else <laughs> going black scrubs. Then there's something else going on with the, you know, if you look at this thing. Something the, happens the, to you. The, amazing, the thing is, this. I think, honestly, what this film's going to do more than anything, whether it's the biggest hit in the world or not, what it's going to do is really change the model. Every studio, every movie studio is going to change their way of making movies because they're not going to say, why do we need to spend $250 million to make an event movie? Yeah. These guys, these kids made it for $10 million. And they're, I mean, th look at this shit. I mean, it looks like it's a yeah, $100 million movie, which blew me away. Yeah, I'm really just happy does. to be, be on the bandwagon. Yeah, you know? exactly. And you know, it's something bet. fucked up happening because the Statue of Liberty's panties are showing yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime the Statue of Liberty's fucking draws is... Yeah, yeah, you know there's a problem. Yeah, she's got a fucking tampon on. It's I mean, like, the, oh, the, the, Jesus. Basically, the premise is mass abduction on a global scale. That's what it is. On a global oh, scale, okay. these aliens are coming in. You look into the light... You get sucked into the spaceship. You oh, just look shit. up, and it's calling you. People started by masses are just going out in the street. They're going out yeah, in the street, and all look, of a sudden, so. you look up, and that shit sucks you up. And it's gonna—I'm telling you—it's gonna freak like people. Out. See, I didn't know what to ask. I mean, I'm, I don't know what's what the secret now. Are they? Are they? Uh, they need to. Are we food? Are they populating their planet? Don't tell me. I don't want to ruin it. Well, yeah, just, I don't want to know. I didn't. I thought that might have ruined it. Just Listen, now. the film. Nah, you the, can kind of see they're sucking people up. The film <laughs> deals. The film deals with the end of the earth, but I'm telling you, they're not just killing you. So that's mm. what's going to freak you out. Ah, whoa. They're not just killing you. Is it an hour, fifty, two hours? It's sixty-two minutes. No, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> well, they're going, wait a minute. You're going to leave the theater wanting wait more. Wait a minute. <laughs> 62. I like Brad. You, <laughs> you know, I, you, you know <laughs> the thing is, I, I make kind of reality-based, you know, uh, kind of action comedies. Most of them, and I've done Red Dragon, the prequel to Silence of the Lambs. I've mm -hmm. done, you know, Family Man. I did, but, and, uh, but m most of my stuff is kind of, you know, X-Men, kind of reality. I mean, the truth is, this movie is an alien movie, but you buy it. I mean, that's the thing that, that's going to scare the shit out of you. That's why we got... We, I said, we got to get somebody like Dan Rather, you know, somebody that, that is going to be a voice that's going to say... Yeah, yeah, because Steve Hawkins is saying... Steve Hawkins, you know this guy, right? The guy yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. Kind of, he's like, aliens are coming. And there's people in America that really, really believe this. Yeah. So these are these... I'm telling Jesse you... Jesse the body. No, no, I'm telling <laughs> you. This isn't a Scientology shit. I mean, people are saying that it's coming. And... Uh, and this movie just kind of is like everyone's fears. Like, what would you do? Basically, this is dealing with what would you do if aliens came? How would you deal? What, what would you do? You're in this building. Mass you get rape. <laughs> yes. hide. I got to be honest. I get a bunch of guns and just commit a lot of horrible sexual crimes. <laughs> Knowing the laws are going to change drastically yeah, by tomorrow. The, the law's very, very busy <laughs> right. at that point, so I think I'd but get away with it. you can't just say the aliens are coming. What's their proof? Why, why are they saying that? No, no, I'm just saying scientists, people. I mean, if you look, that report, by the way, that Dan Rather report. The Dan, and I'm telling you right now, the Dan Rather report was a real report with another journalist that we couldn't license, that we couldn't use, oh. and we went verbatim. The Stephen Hawking thing about Stephen Hawking saying that the aliens are coming, blah, blah, blah. That is a real report that we recreated. You know, I mean, there's like, look, look on the internet. I mean, it's like the most talked about shit in the world. I mean, you know, right. and that's why these films, you know, are really working. You know, I don't, I don't believe in, uh, in aliens? aliens at all. You don't uh, believe in aliens? No. I believe. Well, Just like ghosts. I don't believe in things that, that tease you <laughs> and, they, and they don't do that. Like, yeah, like do that. I believe shit. in that. <laughs> if that happens, I don't believe in peeking around. Maybe they don't have a reason to do that yet. Uh, they're reasoning. Whatever they're, they're fucking reasoning hiding they're behind clouds, and they're still studying. Well, I don't know. I don't we know. shit every day and <laughs> die every day. Yeah, I don't know if they're hiding. They're behind trying clouds. to figure it out. I don't believe it. I believe there's aliens out there. I'm not sure about the whole UFO if thing. I believe there's a lot. There's life somewhere in well, the spooky, spooky system. Yeah, and they don't know us either. They're walking around except for their fucking noses is on their forehead, <laughs> and they're fucking shopping about this? at the alien Whole Foods. <laughs> That's what the fuck they're doing. And they got the same bunch of douchebags. What if they look? Like you and me, though. 
They do. Yeah. It was probably fuck them. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I bet they bet they probably do look like uh, us. Yeah. Because they're they're going by the same. The same, if they go by the same things rules, that the universe yeah. is going by, the same so, rules of the universe, the same rules of the universe. So it's probably the same shit, except maybe different sun, slight variation. I can yeah. believe there's a Krypton out yeah. there, <laughs> but Superman will die. You think there's hair? <laughs> you think there's blacks on other uh, on other other there's planets? There's different colors. <laughs> there's you're niggas. Talking, you're talking. I don't know if there's blacks, See, I, I can't but say there's that. a fucking <laughs> green and orange motherfucker who get fucked over. <laughs> And fucking the cult diggers <laughs> on Slufon Five, nigga. <laughs> you're talking about like that. You see, you're talking like they really exist. So you, you start to believe it. No, I believe he in... believes in other life forms, but that's that's what an alien is. But I don't yes. believe in that they're here. They don't. They didn't build the pyramids. They didn't do nothing right. special. Who built the they, damn pyramids? Though? Some fucking yeah, some Egyptians. Goddamn, yeah. 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 yeah who built Yul the Brenner. Damn pyramids? Yul Brenner. He built them. <laughs> what about those uh, ancient uh, landing strips? They're with the landing. the signs, you don't things? think you don't think they are either. The lines, what the, the lines, lines and shit the, where they're the saying mountains. that's old man with a great lawnmower that's doing <laughs> fucking. <laughs> not not that. I'm talking about the stuff that is uh, carved into the rocks yeah, and shit. Those right? things, they're only like a quarter of an inch deep. These things, but they they're visible from uh, airplanes. So so why are there landing strips? When when alien ships can just go Up and do and that. And, yeah. Where's that yeah. one? So, Where's that? so they had a fucking Mayan Hold on, with look. two flags. <laughs> look, that's an ancient. <laughs> just stop. Yeah, there, there's that's ancient an... uh, airstrips. Some of them are in Peru. Yeah, yeah man. Are why was in, uh, why are they in Peru like what that? Those, what, how about the the, the sculpts of the faces? What are they called? The uh... Oh, the Sphinx? Or the no, 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 no. The, uh, oh, oh, oh. On Mars? No. no uh, I know Easter Island? Easter, Easter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the heads on Easter Island. I believe that people had a lot of time, dude, with <sighs> sticks and, and forks <laughs> and they <laughs> carved heads. They just That's carved crazy. stuff. Yeah, they how the cranes. fuck do they make that? With fucking people, who, you think him. aliens did that and left them there? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, why not? Why? why here's not? my thing. Why not? I can believe in it, but I don't like all this playing around. That's what I'm saying. I don't like yeah, the playing yeah. around. That's my problem. It's like w the aliens are these these supernatural things that are watching us and gathering information and and what abducting us, but they're playing around. Yeah, land in Central Park, motherfucker. Yeah, they're, like stop playing. Get out, start shooting. What are you gonna do guns? if they start landing? What the hell? I fucking gonna... cry like everybody else. Is gonna <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be a little bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna exactly. I'm gonna fucking whine and and have them fucking, you know. I like this guy right here. Hopefully, they, they want to eat fucking white people. Look, that's that's a real alien. The <laughs> Akak <laughs> <laughs> alien. Like these. This is why um, the kind of movies that you're doing, Skyline. Skyline Get the theaters tomorrow. It's vi it's visceral to me. Like like I said, when I saw Independence Day the first. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. or that visceral feeling when I yeah. when I when you get when you see the giant tidal wave that's in every end yeah. of the world. Yeah. That yeah. that. It's like ooh. Well, this is the end of the world movie, but ooh. that for those. So I'm They're I'm kidnapping interested in people line. too. So don't be scared if you're sitting in Magic. Is there a Magic Johnson Theater in New York? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people are gonna be screaming uptown. at the screen. Uptown. <laughs> run, mother <laughs> so you're putting your reputation on this movie, there, Brett. I love the movie. You I love think the it's, you know, Skyline. I think it's more. It's, it's more than just loving the movie. I really think it's. It's when I love young filmmakers. Guys are up and coming that are smarter than me, better than me, going to the next level, like JJ did with with you know with the, his movies that he's directing. These two young guys are really young. I mean, to me, I'm an old man now, but these guys are kids. And I did my first movie when I was 26. These guys are probably 30 right now. And they're blowing my mind. It's like I they could, just, they grew up, you know, watching my movies. And I'm now look, learning from them, which is incredible. Talking about like J.J. Abrams and stuff. I, I could still watch, I've watched that Star Trek movie 20 times. It's incredible. And I, I got it, it on my again. iPod. I got to watch it. It's, it's, it's great, supposed to be man. fantastic. Yeah, I'm not a Star Trek fan it, either. It, it, it's one of the movie. best, like, movies as far as uh, taking a subject that's been beaten to death. Mm -hmm. Star Trek, I mean, how many fucking movies have they made and everything? And but that's series, what I'm saying, reinventing and shit. And completely new and But that's different. what I love, this, you know, thinking outside the box and not mm -hmm. worrying about what other people did in the past. That's why I love right. it. It's like, I love seeing people pass me up. I'm not one of those guys, fuck those young motherfuckers. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. I'm the man. You know, I really believe that you know the the next generation is is just keeps getting better right like Especially the guys who did it before you 10 million dollar movie that's going to be in the probably next fucking make 40 million bucks on these the are the, night. these are the guys that have the, like Brett and JJ J. Abrams and uh, a couple other guys are the guys I remember I had a meeting and I said man I one day I want to I want to be like uh 
Uh, what's the big boy? The, the big boy. Big, big boy. <laughs> Lucas? The, the, the producer. <laughs> Spielberg. Oh. Nah, he's in your genre. Um, his boy, his partner died. Oh, oh, Jerry Bruckheimer. I said Bruckheimer. Oh. I said, man, man, I would love to produce something and then like just shoot him off like Bruckheimer. The guy laughed in my fucking face. <laughs> but JJ, A oh, st stop, bro. JJ <laughs> Abrams, yeah, he looked away and shit. He was, you can do it. That's like them fucking aliens. <laughs> <laughs> A fucking nigga Bruckheimer ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> Ratner and JJ are the guys. You can see the guys that are coming up to like be the new Bruckheimers that yeah, are yeah. that are in there and JJ's in there like you know like that and I always wondered how do how does a guy like JJ J. Abrams get to be the Star Trek guy or how does Peter Jackson get to be the fucking Hobbit guy you know what it is it's just it's just you know guys move coming uh, come up and they move out of the way and you never you know it's like the guys you know when I was doing uh, I remember before me when I was doing music videos Hype Williams was doing videos before America, me, yeah. and he was the hot shit. And then all of a sudden, I started coming up. And then I was, and then all of a sudden, when I went on to do movies, Paul Hunter, I remember, came to see me. He was like, "God, I'm only doing these ten, twenty thousand dollars movies, video, music videos. How am I going to get to do this guy's?" Mm -hmm. Then he, then he became the next guy. So you know, there's always the next guy. No, coming but I mean, up. literally, yeah, these guys get their fucking hands on. Yeah. King Kong, like how do you how do you get your hands yeah, yeah. on the product? Well, Meaning never, not how do you direct it, but how do you on a huge franchise? You know what it like, is? How do you I, go? I own this shit. Uh, I'm I, fucking the King Kong guy yeah, now. Yeah, I yeah. never, I never, I knew I'd be making movies. I never dreamed I'd be making movies as big as I was. You know, what I mean, I never thought God I'd be making a movie like Rush Hour, X Men, or two hundred million dollar movie. Yeah, I never yeah. thought because when I was a kid, I remember seeing Batman and going, Oh my God. Never dreamed I'd make a movie as big as that. And then I do X-Men as bigger than that. Yeah, so yeah. It's, I, I, I don't think you know. I think you just got to, you know, I don't want to be corny or anything, but you got to believe in yourself and your time no, will... No, it's the wrong... I think hmm. I'm, I'm not doing... I'm being literal. Well, probably, P this probably it's not how do you make... But how, this J.J. Involved, Abrams obviously. got his hands... You got to have the talent. But on then you Star gotta, Trek. Peter Jackson's a prime example. How do you get your hands Jackson on Star Trek? Directing that movies lie. that were, eh, you know, yeah. all right... They're, they're these cheesy horror movies, yeah. and then he gets one of the biggest franchises in history yeah. and does an amazing job with well, it. Well, he was passionate about it. He had a point of view. He had an idea. He got in the right in the door, because I think what it is is it's passion, tenacity, persistence. I don't give up. If, I, but if you look at his earlier movies, oh yeah, even no, right before there's no he rhyme, did If you looked Lord at my student Rings. films, you'd be like, "This guy's never going to make it <laughs> a million like, why years." Is he, why would the, they hand him Lord of the Rings for God's sake? You know, sake. people learn, they grow, they focus, they get. You know, it's not only it's 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 look. Uh, I think it's a lot of luck too, but luck is when yeah, opportunity yeah. meets preparation. I of got course. an opportunity, I was prepared. I got offered movies before I did Rush Hour, but I didn't want to do them because I said I'm going to fuck this up. I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah. So I went yeah. and did. I said I'm going to do 100 music videos before I do one movie. That was my strategy. Then I do that, and I'm like, you know what? I'm ready now. I did Money mm -hmm. Talks. Money was Talks a, was great. Yeah, that was my first movie. That, and, matter of fact, that goddamn Chris, that well, was... Even though I think his best acting job was uh, Fifth Element, to be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, he, um, you didn't understand what the fuck he was saying in Fifth Element. Fucking made me laugh. Yeah, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Corbin, Corbin, I can't do this, Corbin. I can't do this, Corbin. Corbin. What was your biggest uh, uh, music video? What'd you oh, say? God, Madonna. Ma I did all the Mariah Carey. I did. I won uh, video of the year for Madonna, Beautiful Stranger with Austin Powers. You remember that one? Sure. Yeah, the one with Austin Powers. That. But look, opportunities <laughs> came and I grabbed it. I said, you know what happened with Chris Tucker? I saw Chris Tucker doing stand up on the Deaf Comedy Jam. Russell would send me to go see the stand, the, the black comedians. And out of all of them, the funniest one was Chris Tucker. And I said, I went up to him and I said, hey man, I'm an up and coming, I'm a music video director. I want you to be in my heavy D video, Nothing But Love. I got Nothing But Love. Was that fucking, he seemed, <laughs> f and talent was in that. Yes. You put talent I in I saw there. talent and Chris Tucker doing stand up. And I said, you guys, I want to put you in the video. Chris was like, how much money you got, man? That uh, seemed like uh, yesterday. I said, I only got $500. And Chris Tucker, <laughs> quite frankly, the Def Jam when it was big, voted greatest bit of all time. On Def Jam, history of Def Jam. What, Chris Bernie Tucker? Mac was second. Oh, Bernie Mac? Chris uh, Tucker, right? Chris Tucker, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson as yep. a pimp. Yeah. Greatest really? stand up <laughs> bit on Def Jam. But I saw him ever. do that. I saw him rehearse. I saw him, I'm sorry, audition. And I went to him and I said, I'm going to get, I got $500. He goes, I, I need a thousand. I go, I don't have it. He goes, he goes, uh, he goes, can I keep the wardrobe? <laughs> and so I gave him five hundred dollars, gave him the wardrobe. He did the video, became the biggest video on MTV. It was the first time like urban rap videos were because remember it was all rock and roll on yeah, MTV. Yeah. He does the video, blows up. Okay, 
Three months later, I'm starting to direct big videos from D'Angelo, Madonna, Mariah. All of a sudden, I, I, without, I just thought of it. I said, you know what? He was so good in the video. I sent him a check for five hundred dollars, and I guess he got it when he really needed it. And I had not seen him again. He went on to do Friday. Oh yeah, and blew yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. Then he goes and does Dead Presidents. He got paid fifteen thousand dollars to do Friday. Okay. Then he got twenty five thousand dollars to star in Dead Presidents. Jesus. And, Dead Money and, Talks. And then the head Did of he New hire Line, you? yes, Listen Chris Tucker hired you. Okay. Then oh, New hell. Line Cinema yeah. calls him up and says, "We want you to do this movie, Money Talks." He start. He does it. He's about to do it. They got a, some some big commercial director. I don't remember the guy's name. And the guy goes to the head of the studio a week before they're supposed to start shooting. He said, "This guy, Chris Tucker, man, he's only improvising. He doesn't want to say the lines on the page." He goes, "What are you, what are you saying?" He goes, "Let's fire him because I can't control him." Now, if a director can't control the actors, you you have no right being the director. The head of the studio says to the guy, "You're fired." Fires the guy, calls him, Chris Tucker. Goes, "What are we gonna do? We don't have a director. We gotta start shooting." And one week goes, "I remember this cool white boy, Brett Ratner." Jesus. Calls me in, they hire me a week later. I'm shooting at my first movie. Now, look at that. Now, yeah, that's, now, how, that's, that's how a little luck, obviously. <laughs> but you were prepared. But also, I was prepared, but it was also that fact that, look, I, I, I did the right thing I was by Chris Tucker. Meaning, I took care of him. I, I didn't give him the final odds because I thought he was going to become a big movie star and just hire me one day. Yeah. And he said, you know what? He did right by me. I got 10 more videos after that. I was, not, I was a selfless guy. I said, you know what? I'm going to hook this guy up because he needed the money. I knew he needed the money, and then he blew up, and that's how it is. I'm saying, remember the people on the way up, because if not, you're going to see him back on the way down. That's a good lesson. Ralph Cramden said. Yeah. And, and doing this radio show. <laughs> well, here's the thing. And, and, here's and, what and, I need and, help. I want to make a remake, and I'm dead serious. Which one? I need to remake The Warriors. Oh, so, yeah? That's, I, I think they've been working on that for years. They, yeah, this guy's going to fuck it up, whoever's doing it. Who's remaking The Warriors? Trying to get yeah, a script. Uh, they'll make it PC or it's, something. It's, like it's, uh, no, he wants to do it in Los Angeles. The, the person. No, you got to do it in New York. But He's New not York, doing it in New York. Is it? New York isn't the New York anymore. Name. I understand that. But it's but. not the same New York it used to be. Peter Jackson. No. no, no, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> He's, it, it's, uh, He's he Jackson wants to do it through, with through Los Angeles, man. I, I need it. I'm going to buy it from him. I want to get it. Help me get it, uh, Brett. I already got. I already got it. Um, you rock see, it, cast see, as you just let me just Cyrus. You you just, Cyrus. <laughs> oh, real? That's a good idea. The Rock is cast. By the way, as, I already got the fucking movie in my head. In my Superman. Chris Rock was was uh, Jimmy Olsen. Oh shit! I had Jimmy. O I said Chris Rock is Jimmy Olsen. I had a whole different. I had a whole spin on it. How's he gonna hold the camera with his fingers all f twisted up? <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, you know I'm shooting a movie in New York City. I'm here for like six months, right? Are you? Know? What movie are you shooting? Oh, I shoot, seen, seen you it. know that I'm shooting a movie called Tower Heist. Been working on it for three and a half years. It's a movie that big Eddie, names is in it. But Eddie Murphy Eddie brought Murphy. me the idea. Okay, and it's Eddie Murphy and Ben Stiller together. And basically, it's a bunch of blue-collar guys working in a building in New York City, like the Trump, you know, some of these big high-rise mm -hmm. buildings. And all of a sudden, they, this guy, like a Bernie Madoff guy, lives in the penthouse of the building. And he does a Ponzi scheme, and he loses all the employees' pension fund. So he gets put under house arrest. So imagine, he's under house arrest in the penthouse, and he's lost everybody's life savings. Who were, so the doorman, the elevator guy, the guy who works in the garage, the guy loses yeah, all their money. Him. And no, no, and all of a sudden, he's under house arrest. And Ben Siller, who's like the manager of the building, finds out that he's hiding $20 million in his apartment. So they got to break into the apartment while the Bernie Madoff character is in the apartment 24 hours a day under house arrest. There's two FBI agents sitting outside the front door. And they, it's the only one door in, and it's during the Thanksgiving Day Parade when there's 10,000 cops on the street below. And they got to get in that apartment and steal the 20 million bucks. It's crazy. Matthew so Broderick's in this movie, yeah, too, Matthew right? Broderick plays the tenant who's, who's they're foreclosing because there's nice. fucked up times in the building who helps with the heist. I got Gabby from, from Precious. I got Precious in it. Who's she playing? The building? She's playing the house. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Holy shit. No, you can't go there, man. Hey, look I'm at him. Look, 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 look. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. He's looking me up and down. Hey, uh, who's you're talking, fat man? <laughs> that don't mean my it. eyes are broke, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's about to say that you could be a stand-in for Precious <laughs> if she's sick oh, one day. Damn. If Precious is sick one day. The 12th floor. Patrice is going to get the call. Look, he's like, help me. Get me out of here. No, but this is fine. But she's great. She's playing one of the housekeepers who's an expert. See, the thing about this, this ain't not going. Ocean's Eleven, okay? These guys aren't professional thieves. They're regular blue-collar guys. They're mm -hmm. underdogs. And they, they've been saying, you know, we've been scoping out this building for 11 years, and we haven't even known it. You know what I mean? Oh, because yeah. Who's the Bernie Madoff guy? Alan Alda. 
I got, oh, okay. I got oh, Casey Stanford. Affleck in Jesus. it. I got Casey Affleck. I got uh, uh, Eddie Murphy, Ben Stiller, who together. I mean, those are the two big. I mean, those I just guys. Saw that and, and by That's the way, awesome. this is a, an edgy part for Eddie. But this is going back to what he did back in the day when he did Beverly Hills Cop. Is he still in the mood to do that shit? Oh hell yeah, <laughs> Scott. Yeah, we got to get them out of here. Oh yeah, we got to get Brett out of here. Tony Scott. That's who's doing the war. Uh, Brett. Yes, man. So uh, you got a busy day. We want to ask you about Bush, too. Maybe next time. You took a plane with Bush. I did? That's what Norton's saying. Norton's Ed lying. Edward Norton? Uh, Jimmy or Norton. Jimmy Norton. <laughs> All right. Maybe did not. I take a plane with George Bush? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I had Air dinner. Force One. Oh, wow. Did Norton <laughs> set us up bad? No, with his father. I was with his father. Okay. Ah. Maybe for, for next time. And yeah, who's, yeah. Who's, who's spreading rumors about uh, Serena Williams? That was my girlfriend. You used to go out with Serena. Yeah. Delicious. Man. You're impressed? Patrice <laughs> loves this. <laughs> yeah. Two years. That oh, was my girl. Jesus wow. Let Christ. me tell you something. I did Prison Break. You know, I created that show Prison Break. Right? I, I, was, I literally had to go to prisons just because we were doing research. And all of a sudden, when I go into the main cell block, people are like, yo, Ratner, yo, Brett, yo. B and I'm like, how the fuck? Are they? God, they watch a lot of Rush Hour here. <laughs> and I realized it was because... I literally went and started, then I started getting, getting closer and I went in and looked in every cell. I didn't want to get spit on and had shit thrown at me. But I, was like, I was literally walking up to every cell block and I thought I was shocked. I thought there'd be a picture of Halle Berry, uh, Beyonce. Every single cell had a picture of Serena in that cast. You packing Major Wood, huh? Uh, no, no, no. I'm, For I'm, you to I'm, fucking... Because he wasn't afraid like some white guys. Oh, ooh, just you know what's funny? Fucking, you know what's he's got a mega wood. That's and why I fuck with black people, let, man. Let me tell you. God that. damn it. What you packing? A nine? Let me tell you something. Phil is fearless. Let me tell you something crazy. Fuck. Let me tell you something crazy. Every uh, two, two, two demos came to me, approached me when I was dating her. Every white guy. Okay, Colin Farrell, every, everybody, tell me what that's like. Because uh, normally, uh, and everyone's uh, like, yo, yo, what, what is it? Because they're intimidated. I mean, she's like, she's it's a scary. It's yeah, scary, she's, yeah. man. I mean, she's bigger Very than me, you know, by a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and more muscular, right? And, but uh, you introduce her to Cunnilingus, because them motherfuckers from Compton, <laughs> they don't eat pussy. He got, he went down, and she's like, oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. And then, <laughs> and, and then the other one was was black girls just started coming pre coming up on me. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cuz they were like, yeah. you're taking care oh, of her. But then I started getting heckled out at the tennis matches. I'm like, what you doing with my sister, man? You know, people oh, getting pissed yeah, off. Yeah, fuck yeah. them. Yeah, fuck I'm them. proud of you, man. Black, yeah, black guys are You probably know who introduced like, me? You know, Michael Jackson introduced me to, to Serena. Really? Michael really? was staying in my house in Miami for about 3 months and and there was a ring doorbell rang and it was Serena. I'm like and and, and I, we walk in and she's like, "I'm hi, I'm here to see Michael." And I'm like, "Oh, so he came in, I'm like, oh, hi. How do, you, how do you make that move? Because he came in with fucking little dude confident like this motherfucker. Because <laughs> nobody comes nobody out of like that. Her. He fucking looked up at it and go, you know what I'll do to you? And she <laughs> lost it, right? No, no, you, I, it's not that. I had to, I had to oh, be, stop fucking. I had to be your friend on, first for a long time. Oh, yeah. you went friend zone. Well, no, I didn't know. I didn't even. But this is what happened. I, I made one move and she said, if you're the last man on earth, right? I'm looking, looking me dead in the eye. Dead serious, and ain't ever gonna happen. So don't even try it. When someone says that to me, it's a I'm, challenge. I'm going <laughs> after that. Yeah. Damn. I like when a girl says that. And to he me. went right and down on that it. fucking beady <laughs> cooch hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brett had munched his way to glory. <laughs> Fuck, I'm jealous, you motherfucker. <laughs> This way to goddamn glory. We could talk to you all day, bro. Uh, Damn, man. Son hey, of a bitch. I, I love hanging out with you guys. Thanks for having me. He's really, I, I think for people, I think people need to see this movie. Skyline tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Skyline. Go see it because if you love aliens, if you love, if if you love going to a movie, and getting scared to death, and being terrified, and having fun in the movie, but more so, if you want to see something that is, uh, you know. So in, like when I was a kid and I saw Star Wars, and I'm not comparing to Star Wars. Right, right. It, it was there was a defining moment because I was mm -hmm. like, God damn, look what they're doing technologically. These guys are going to a whole other level. Yeah, we level. were just talking about how amazing oh. it. When's it coming out? Tomorrow, tomorrow, man. It's tomorrow. Yeah. You better buy your I'm ticket like, you know online. What? I'm fucking retired for about two, three months. I'm going. Mm. I'm going to go tomorrow. You <laughs> got to go tomorrow. Just yeah, just, mellowing out. Yeah, get all done. your friends and just done do for it. Going tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow. Go with a group of. I'm actually going to spend money on this motherfucker. Right, no <laughs> bootleg. Ladies and gentlemen, no bootleg. No bootleg. We're no spending bootleg. money on Brett Ratner. This right, is for man. Serena. <laughs> Not for Brett. We got it from <laughs> after bootlegs. No Harlem bootlegs. Thanks, We're going man. to I'm see that fucking skyline. I'm looking for a girl. So if you got a girl from all, all you single ladies out there. 
you know, I'm looking to settle down. I really, I might have yeah, a weave right. and fucking, hair. you're getting yeah. big enough to date white women now. You yeah. fucking, <laughs> forget all of that shit. <laughs> but I like a big ass, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, you should have had a little producer. In Italy, mama, ma, there's mama listas or men who like big breasts or culistas. I'm definitely the culista, yeah. man. I'm mm. the culo, man. I'm proud of you, man. Cool. I like a big ass. <laughs> I'm right, proud man. of you. And the movie making also, sir. Thanks for having yes. me. Man. Brett, thank you. Brett. All right, Very man. Cool. My dreams are coming true. Thanks, guys. All right, Brett Ratner, right, Brett. Skyline, tomorrow in theaters. Check it out. Check out the tra trailer, at least. And you'll be hooked, man. All right, we're going to take a quick... Why Guns N' Roses before I... I'm so confused. It's his beat. I know, but he plays Guns N' Roses? If someone punched in at the beginning of our show, they'd be like, Did they play fucking a thing from the good, the bad, and the ugly? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was our uh, coming back music. Ah, and then I find out we're be. playing some wimpy shit. Yeah, what was that? No. We're playing yeah. wimpy shit. That was uh, a little funk for Patrice there. What's that going to be? Uh, wedding Patrice song? doesn't need fuck? funk. <laughs> what was it? It was uh, it was from an Ice Cube song. It's a uh, sample from Brick called Daz. What are you trying to do? You change it up a little bit. Patrice didn't even know you did that. Because <laughs> Guns N' Roses was playing. <laughs> It's the least you could do, thanks. <laughs> I would have preferred Civil War. Demi Moore is yeah. fucking 48. Yeah. yeah. Ashton Kush is what? 19, 20? Nah, he's, he's up be. there now, finally. He's probably 30-something. 30 30 Come on. He's probably 35, I would guess. Gotta be. 48. He's got to be. He's been around a while. <laughs> you know, like the Demi Moore at 48? Three, three kids, know. right? Yeah, she has three kids. Gorgeous. As far as 48 goes, she, she wears it well, though, right? She wears yeah. 48. When they're well, out. No? You ever seen the pictures? Yeah, yeah. I love those pictures when they show celebrities that are uh, older and, and they look good when they're out at premieres and stuff. I like when they show them taking out their garbage and <laughs> right, getting their the mail. Morning. And when they, there's the makeup no makeup on, on oh, and you shit. you ever see makeupless Uma Thurman? Really? <laughs> Danny? Oh, Danny's well, right you on would it. Name, you would name a Uma. <laughs> that's what her name would be. If she didn't have a name and you hey, see her taking out the Uma. garbage. Here we go. All you right, go, that's oh. Uma. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <Yeah. laughs> not quite that. How about this? Woo. Oh, not quite that sassy Mia Wallace. You know, she has natural beauty. <laughs> oh, is that it? Why couldn't we ask Brett about uh, Michael Jackson? He oh. had to run out of here. Fucking that was a weird. I was looking I around. To hang out. I wanted him Did to talk about Michael Jackson. Mike was just hanging at your crib. Hanging at. What are yeah. you doing? And he says it so casually, like, "Hey." Yeah, Serena's yeah. like, "I'm here to see Michael." Yeah. That's a weird story. Yeah. I know, but and he yeah. had to just bounce, right? I know he was at. He was late. Actually. He was already. Uh, yeah. That like, was George overtired. Animal Steel was hanging out with me and fucking. <laughs> yeah. I would be like, "What? I want to know more what, about what's that." What's your? Th that's the day Patrice what? fucked. <laughs> fucking... Hold on, hold on. What's your? What's your? <laughs> Patrice, what's your version of that story? Nothing. I know. <laughs> that's what I'm getting Nothing. At. I don't have a stuff. And you're, that's an, you're in entertainment, but you're not hanging with Michael Jackson and Serena no, Williams comes I, by to say hi. Let me tell you something. Hi. I get uncomfortable because I, I saw most Def at the airport. Yeah. He comes up to I'm in line. He goes, hey, what's up, P? And I'm, a, I'm like, who do, I, know, I know you, but yeah, I don't, like, did most Def say what's up, P, to me? Like, I was, that's it made me cool. nervous. It was cool, but... I'm such a fucking uh, 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 uncomfortable yeah. in Hollywood that I I didn't know what to just say. I didn't. I, hey, what's up, most deaf <laughs> or <laughs> MD or I know of him. Uh, what do you say? Right. I saw Ernie Hudson on a plane. I'm I'm quiet the whole fucking time. He's ordering shit with equal, and I want to say to him badly. I said, "Man, that's poison, sir." You know, you you living a long time, man. Just try not to drink. But I just was keeping quiet. I didn't want to go. Who's he? But I Ghostbuster uh, Ernie guy? Hudson, yeah. yeah. And uh, and I go. And I'm just sitting there going, this guy is like black royalty. I would say he's in the black community. Ernie's pretty pretty. Oh big. yeah, yeah, sure. And I and I'm just I just figured leave him alone, like. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't. Why would you? Why would you? Bother like when people him? recognize me as a person in in this business, it makes me it it weirds me out. Like like where you go? What's up, man? Oh man, I'm a big fan. And I go, thank you, dude, that I've seen on TV, too, but <laughs> sure, I don't really know. So, so the idea of fucking Michael Jackson at your house, and then Serena comes and goes, uh, hi, I'm here to see Michael, that seems like some weird thing that don't yeah, even exist in the fact that Hollywood exists. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. I don't have any I hung out with this guy stories and shit. <laughs> and my friend, I got a buddy in Boston who hates that I'm not like that because he comes here and, you know, he sleeps, sleeps on the fucking blow-up. 
<laughs> mattress and, and shit. He, and he's hoping someone famous he, stops by. He's hoping he wants that a piece of that. He's like, yo, where the party's at? <laughs> oh, thinking it's gonna Nigga, be. A... <laughs> call up where the party. Call at. up your Hollywood friends. Motherfucker, you right. don't know Pete Bryson, nigga. Call, <laughs> call up George Clinton. Is he having a party at his house? Where the cocaine and white women? I'm like, nigga, I don't fuck with that. I come home after I do a show. This motherfucker's oh like, you suck. Uh, shit, he wanted the, He's the late night bring the party. party to your house. Yeah, right? yeah. Where the bitches? Uh, oh, right on. You know what's here I'm here now, baby, baby. Like a dog in heat. And I just have you. <laughs> that fucking racist. What's his name again? It's, it's Nuge, right? Yeah, Ted Nugent. Yeah, they're they're music music without him now, baby. Is that a Kasha without any makeup? Uh, Kesha, whatever. Kesha, yeah. yeah. Kesha, Kasha. She's brutal, man. Kashi. Oh, actually, she looks yeah, like a regular right. girl. Yeah, you fucking put a little eye makeup on her. Yeah, exactly. Her, her, her bathing suit pictures are way worse than that. Are they? Tyler Durden what, has the she? bathing suit pictures. Yeah, who is she? Yeah. What's she do? Kesha does uh, TikTok and uh, she sings. Yeah, singer. Oh, is there new uh, bikini pictures oh, on okay. what would Tyler Dern do? Was she a mess? No. Nah, I'm trying to. What's help, wrong with her? Help our pal out if there's new pics. Uh, they they like getting the bad bikini pictures of uh, of uh, Kesha. What's wrong with her? In your opinion, Kesha? She's got a flat ass. First, does of all. she? Oh, yeah. okay. I, I didn't well, you're, know. You're I a fan of. No, What's no, wrong with her there? Oh, okay. where, yeah, that's a problem. Where, where you want to start? That's a problem. Wow, why did what she got like a her oh, body is belly. rectangular with <laughs> it's rectangular with she's fucking got no legs. Shape. She's built like what the nigga. The fuck, she's built like the nigga before the alien came out in the first alien. That's how his stomach was. <laughs> she's thirty. Like the guy that got the shit attached to his face, <laughs> yeah, right? All pasty. Dude, and that's the kitchen scene. Her numbers are thirty six, thirty six, thirty six. What? Look at what her. happened? Yeah, that is, that is a <laughs> Thank you, Patrice. That's hilarious. Is it? That's she her fucking should, numbers, man. <laughs> she should not be wearing a bikini. This. Oh, oh my god. god. And she, her best friend, makes sure she's her. standing right next to her because that ass look like Serena standing next to her. She's supposed to be a sex. Symbol, man. Uh, how the go to what fuck with that Tyler Durden do dot com wwtdd dot com. So, punch up another one with her ass uh, in a bikini. Uh, it is the thing flattest there. ass in the history go, of flat go ass. Go to the next it's one over. Like go to that one. Good yeah, I want to see that one. Good lord. Oh, oh my god. god. She's got no curve in the, her back that then goes she has out no to an curve ass. Anywhere. It goes from oh. her shoulder blades to her lower back to her ass in a complete straight line. Oh, oh my God. God. what an oh. awful ass! How does even if she bends over, she can't make an ass. The out of fucking that. go balls. to Google Images and pop up a hot picture of her, and let's see what they fucking make the magic. Into? Let's see what the magic they can fucking perform. That's what the, the magic of Oz. The, the man magic. behind the curtain. Yes. What does he do here? That's what uh, the boys at www.tdd.com should do. Wow. That's the same broad. All right, get, a, get one with some makeup. One. Let me get a I need get a one some, some makeup I need a on her face. One. Compared to what she we looks, just saw, that's same, that's a miracle. Man. Go to that one She's with got her a miracle little, worker. Uh, yeah. Okay, can out. I be can I be fair to her? Uh, yeah. yeah. Her stilo is a f a flat weird ass. Her steez, that's her steez. I'm a mess. What? So she's not. She doesn't have a stilo that's sexy. She her thing is. Yeah, her thing make her is face to be a mess. Look good. I mean, this one, this one, one. But she has a goth kind of mess her, thing to her anyway. But her face Get that one even... where she's uh, on bed, on the bed, laying down right there, uh, down second row over one. Keep going. Bed. No, yeah, no, right yeah, there. Yeah, that yeah. one. Let me see that. Cause oh that's like, God, oh, it's in the bathtub. Fucking hot. Man. See, that's like. But she doesn't look, she like, doesn't that look like that at all. That. Nah. She's sitting in that bathtub. That flat ass is up against the porcelain underneath the water. <laughs> it's a drain stop. <laughs> <laughs> she stopped the drain right. with a flat fucking flap that goes over the drain ass. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Yeah, if someone goes 36, 36, 36, that's a rectangle. Yes. Yeah, it's barely a joke. Like. you got to go see these uh, pictures. There's no shape to her. Oh, see, and this goes back to what I, my, my Facebook theory, yeah. where you have this picture, which is the profile pic. Right, and right. And it's all nice, and she's all sexy in the bathtub. But then that's the tagged photos of Kesha. On right. her friend's yeah. site. Sure. That's, so you get yeah. the more honest. See, that's Tyler Durden putting up Kesha and then tagging her. <laughs> tagging her, right. <laughs> if you were seen with Kesha on the, on the beach with her looking like that, your photos. friends would laugh at you. 
<laughs> yes, you Should would. Well, They'd be uh, like, uh, what are you, what are you, what are yeah. you doing? Friends picture. Oh. Uh, Alex Jones. Oh. oh, I don't know what it means. Hi, welcome Facebook. to the show. Sir? Shit. I'm here, guys. It's ah, great to be back. There he is. I'm just fucking around. You're really there? I'm here waiting in the wings. What, what the hell was up with the Guns N' Roses music? I'm very confused. Do you know? Probably not. We were just sending you music to give you audio to know that we were connected to you. Oh, okay. There, that's how I it works. Gotcha. We got that's Patrice O'Neill in studio. <laughs> Alex has no patience for anything. Nah. You, you have patience, Alex, don't He's you? He told you exactly stuff. what it was. He's busy <laughs> exposing things. A, uh, a couple things. We were just talking about aliens because Brett Ratner was in studio. He's uh, producing that movie Skyline that starts tomorrow. And he thinks the aliens are on their way and they're going to be attacking soon. What do you got on that, Alex? Well, we know that... Obviously, Hubble Telescope in orbit has photographed hundreds and hundreds of billions of galaxies, and now it's been able to look even further out in space and uh, begin to uh, photograph uh, clusters of trillions of galaxies with uh, just unbelievable, uh, you know, amounts of uh, planets uh, orbiting those those tens of trillions of suns. And so there's no doubt that there's life in the universe uh, outside of our tiny planet two-thirds of the way out on the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. That said, uh, search the term Project Bluebeam. And Project Bluebeam is a partially de declassified U.S. government program to have fake alien landings oh. as a pretext to unify the planet uh, around world government uh, against an outside threat. And now the United Nations... Uh, the Vatican and others have appointed full-time ambassadors who are on call 24-7 uh, to meet the aliens uh, when they land. And so uh, we know through the mainstream media and the controllers of uh, culture that they're really uh, imprinting the public mind and the subconscious with the idea that the aliens are coming. And under Project mm -hmm. Bluebeam, they admittedly have programs to project uh, giant flying saucers uh, into the sky, Buddha, Jesus, uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, if they uh, ch choose. So you don't believe in the horse shit with the, with the, uh, the, the aliens, right, Alex? Well, I'm saying that I don't know if aliens have visited do the you, Earth. But do you feel that way? Do you think that happened? I know that there's a government program uh, to create uh, fake flying saucers in the sky, and I know that the Air Force admits in the 40s, 50s, and 60s that the Army, uh, Air Corps, and the Air Force and others uh, hyped up the UFO phenomenon to cover up their secret uh, Personally, and I'm saying approach. personally, your personal just, you know, yeah, you yeah, live in, opinion. do you personally feel like there's aliens watching us? Yeah. Uh, to be clear, I believe that there is life in the universe. I don't know if there's aliens. I feel the same way there's life, but I don't believe in fucking that they're watching us. I, only, yeah, and the yeah. only reason I don't believe it is because I don't believe if they had the technology or like if we had the technology to watch things that we would just be peaking for 10,000 years <laughs> and then come out of a cloud and whatever. I, I just don't believe they're up there playing games. Yeah, I, well, Teresa, I like, tend to agree with you. Uh, and look, I mean, there are trillions and trillions and trillions of galaxies with hundreds of billions of stars per galaxy. And we're pretty self-centered if we think out of untold quadrillions of planets uh, with billions of them no doubt being habitable, uh, that that anybody cares about us. It's kind of like if you're walking through a field that's got a billion bacteria in the dirt and on the grass, uh, that you, you, know, you bend down with a magnifying glass and obsess for thousands of years over one little group of bacteria. Uh, now, there is another view in all of this that my gut tells me that if the aliens are here, and if all of this just isn't an, an, an elaborate disinformation operation and then a lot of fiction writers and people get tied into it so it gets a life of its own that these aliens reportedly and and it is in a lot of the ancient sanskrit uh the hieroglyphs uh i've, I've been down to the aztec temples in mexico that, that literally have what looks like rockets and jet aircraft carved on the walls that if these aliens are really here that it's not aliens that it's humanoids or our or our progeny from hundreds, if not thousands, of years in the future, uh, who are coming back in time, and, and, and the quantum mechanics 
uh, of Einstein and others have shown that this is real, that, that, that our advanced civilization may be time traveling back uh, to manipulate the future or to study, or uh, with all these abduction stories, maybe they need the genetics that they've lost uh, from primitive times, so yeah. it's really us coming back. Hmm. That's very Interesting. confusing. No, no, I, I got what he's saying. You got it. You I'm on that. that. Uh, I, I want to switch uh, gears here a little bit. Uh, talk about this uh, missile. Uh, what are you hearing about the missile uh, slash airplane? Well, they've had former NASA rocket engineers, rocket scientists, and they've had uh, what one of the former Joint Chiefs of Staff have been interviewed day one, saying that's clearly some type of sea-launched missile. Looks like something similar to a Polaris submarine uh, launched. Uh, and we know that in 2000, you can actually search a North Korea fired missile at at Alaska. Ten years ago, of course, North Korea many times has fired missiles right over Japan, crashing into the ocean right off the coast to threaten them. They did it again a few years ago. North Korea fired a missile that came back into orbit. They fired it over the North Pole because uh, you know, they're, they're right over the pole. Uh, that's the shortest distance. Uh, for an intercontinental ballistic missile, and then it didn't have good aerodynamics. It, it, it was a dud. It was a drone. It was a test missile, no warhead, and it broke up over Alaska, uh, its intended target, uh, and uh, rained down. That actually came out in the Alaskan uh, newspapers. It came out in AP. That they, um, they actually shot a missile, and it hit U.S. soil. Yeah, that, that, this was 10 years ago, uh -huh. and so what even mainstream news is now saying is that Quietly, the Pentagon, some people are saying China or North Korea had a sub pop up off the West Coast and fired a test missile as a threat. And, of course, just a few months ago, the U.S., the South Koreans, and the Japanese were out in the South China Sea uh, and uh, were firing test missiles as well. So this is what governments do, kind of like when they'd send the Russian uh, bear nuke bombers uh, over during the Cold War. Yeah, they started doing that again. We knew they were coming. How, how the hell does uh, somebody get that close, uh, especially someone with, like, uh, North Korea, get that close to the coast of the United States? Well, it's international waters. Uh, they, they've had cases. Notice tensions are very high right now because the private Federal Reserve has announced $600 billion to a trillion dollars of QE2, quantitative easing or monetization of debt, which is going to devalue all global currencies. Yeah, just printing money. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and cause inflation because the, the dollar is the world reserve currency, so it's causing global problems. The Chinese government's downgraded uh, our credit rating. Uh, they've been threatening us. The Russians are threatening the, uh, the, the French, uh, the, the German banking minister, finance minister. And so there's a lot of saber rattling, both economic and military, going on. And clearly it's not a contrail like the media tried to spin it later. Some type of uh, powerful uh, missile uh, was was launched off the coast. We only have territorial waters 12 miles out. What would be the upside of them not acknowledging that that's exactly what it is and letting the people know that uh, a foreign country is launching test missiles right off our beach? Well, it was only in a few newspapers that North Korea actually fired a test missile and that it broke up and parts of it rained down on uh, Alaska 10 years yeah, ago. I mean, off the coast of California, though, to, like in this day and age, sure. uh, that's a little much. Like, why, What's the upside of them keeping it secret? Well, the upside is the government likes to play like they're God and are all-controlling and all-powerful uh, and can protect us. And governments do these type of things uh, really on a routine basis to menace each other. And so it is a escalation, kind of a uh, threatening form of diplomacy. Uh, look, you can just search this, This is, or, or you've probably seen it, you guys are news hounds. Uh, we keep hearing about off the coast of Florida, in the, in the Atlantic, mm -hmm. or off the coast of Japan, uh, or, or in the Persian Gulf, Chinese and Russian subs popping up right behind our aircraft carriers, and then it's become a big deal because, and, and some admirals have even gotten in trouble because with the advanced sonar, you know, how are they letting the Chinese uh, and the Russians uh, basically shadow uh, and minish uh, the the, uh, the uh, fleets? And so uh, this is all just a form of uh, brinksmanship hearkening back to the Cold War. I remember back in the Cold War when we were kids or teenagers, it was always on the news about the U.S. was sending submarines over to cut communication cables yeah, you know, yeah, to the yeah, Russians, yeah. and they had subs, and then the Kursk, and our submarines running into their submarines, and, 
I mean, this is just an ongoing thing, and basically the Cold War-type tensions are kicking back up. But I was speculating about mm. this being Russia, China, or North Korea, mainly China or North Korea, because it's in the Pacific, and that's their sphere of influence. They generally do it in areas that they consider to be uh, their turf. Mm -hmm. uh, remember the Chinese, uh, you know, basically flying some of their aircraft into the C-130 right, surveillance, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, or, or AWAC, actually, and then forcing it down. I mean, this is just ongoing uh, type behavior. But, 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 but what we do know is former top brass in the Pentagon, mm -hmm. uh, one of them a chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or, or a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and members of NASA have come out and laughed and said, that's obviously a giant missile trail, uh, some type of ship or submarine launch system. It looks just like a Polaris uh, nuke launch. And, and we know uh, that uh, if, if, if you go back to... Uh, Bill Clinton, uh, he got in a lot of trouble for for helping transfer through Laurel and Hughes uh, the missile systems to North Korea and yeah, China. So, so yeah, yeah, I, I understand the missile system, but do you honestly think North Korea has uh, nuclear sub capability? At I'm not point? saying it was a nuclear sub. They've got a bunch of diesel subs. Many of our subs are diesel because they tend to be more reliable in many cases and don't take well, as much uh, maintenance. I'm, well, saying, well, uh, nuclear... I'm saying they launched a, 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 a warhead-free drone missile is what they're called. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, like they even have the technology enough to launch a missile from a submarine at this point because uh, their, their launches really are kind of archaic. Uh, when you look at their well, they've, they've done submarine launch tests. Uh, they're off their coast over Japan, and they've done ground-based. And a lot of their it's their long-range, eight thousand mile ICBMs that rarely make it into orbit. And so you're right. Look, I don't know. I mean, I mean, in fact, I haven't really covered this much on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com or on my own little radio show because when I can't document something, I don't really talk about it much. You guys raised it. It's kind of like the alien thing. Mm. Uh, I don't really cover aliens uh, because I can't prove it one way or the other. What do you think about uh, Jesse the Body Ventura's show, A Conspiracy Theory? <laughs> Have you caught this thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's... Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty informative, but also entertaining for the general public. I'm actually a consultant on it, and I'm in the oh, next. Oh, you are! And I'm in the next four episodes uh, coming up. In fact, this this Friday, at 9 p.m. Central, uh, it's the Police State series. We actually have an article up on Infowars.com uh, dealing with this, and uh, it's bombshell FEMA camps confirmed. And we actually went out to some FEMA camps, and myself and the governor. And I got threatened with arrest and other things, so it's 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 it's. Hey Alex, he, he oh, Alex, hey, Alex yeah, are the FEMA it in right now? Guys. Alex, are the FEMA camps like are they being loaded up now, or is or is this or they getting ready to get loaded up? Okay, let me be specific. Um, and it's free online on YouTube. It's Police State for the Rise of FEMA. I released it six months ago. Police State for the Rise of FEMA. It was good too. I like that one. And I like and. It, it takes two hours to go over the whole history of it, to show the congressional hearings where they admit the FEMA camps, uh, to show the mainstream news articles, and to show people uh, facilities that are designated as, quote, emergency centers. Act. Mind control. Mind control. I was a former governor, a fighter. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. I'm a former <laughs> Navy SEAL, a governor, a fighter. <laughs> go you know what? See, hold on, hold on. But Was that fucking it, Alex with Alex. a sense of humor? God damn! Alex has a sense of humor. God bless him. Alex, our problem with uh, the Jesse Ventura conspiracy show is he doesn't get into any real shit. Like, we want him to step over the line uh, during when the Area 51 when episode. When we return, Jesse Ventura goes head-to-head -head with Area 51 security. I'm standing here, but I'm turning around. I'm not going to be shot. <laughs> what happened, Jesse? Yeah. Hey, hey, listen. listen no one's going to shoot listen, Jesse Ventura. <laughs> guys, guys, let me just say something about Ventura. He's been on your show quite a few times. I know you guys had that controversy with him, but I've known yeah. him. We want him back, by the I've way. Known him, Tell listen, him I've back. known him really well. Yeah. I've known him really well for about five years, spent a lot of time with him. He really is for real. It isn't a tough guy act. And, you know, uh, he's an older guy. Uh, you know, he is uh, grumpy sometimes. I'm on my way to Plum Island. There's a dinghy following me. Yeah, but, Turn the, around. but the issue is, the issue is he's, he's real. He's a great guy. Uh, he's and and 
And, you know, uh, uh, he was just, you know, tired that morning whenever you guys basically had your attack schnauzer on him. And, attack uh, schnauzer. No, no, you got Unfortunately, the video doesn't do it justice. Yeah. Uh, it was about an hour of going back and forth. Jesse was being and, pretty uh, obnoxious and he to just Jimmy. Didn't, Wouldn't answer questions. Yeah, no, he, he was sitting there. He wasn't letting him finish. Oh, my God. He certainly was. Hey, can you, can you give me an idea of uh, who who may be going to a FEMA camp. Like, what do you have to be doing? Is it, oh, is it, please say is it, what is I want it, you to is say. Is it extreme? Please say what I want you to say. Let me tell you, Patrice. Is it, is it extreme or is Patrice, it... Patrice, the FEMA camps... The FEMA camps are real, oh. Patrice. No, no, I'm no. a governor, and they wouldn't let me into the camp. Yeah, they wouldn't <laughs> let me in. I, they won't let me into the reactor room at the nuclear reactor. What does that tell you? <laughs> uh, perhaps that there's radioactivity in there. And they don't need you going in there, Jesse. And the Plum Island one, come on. There was no boats following them. There was a boat oh, way yes, in the, they were. There was a boat way in the distance, sir. You're not even, oh, that's not true. Let me tell you. We was saw a, it. It was an, an, a little zodiac. Like they <laughs> no, had a, it was they home, let me tell you what lens. happened with that. Let me tell you what happened with that. <laughs> yes, Alex. They couldn't get anybody Submarines. to even rent them a boat to, to go out yeah, there. Plum they, Island's no joke. Guy, but that's the guy's livelihood, all the people's livelihood. They're not going to risk uh, uh, getting uh, in trouble going to Plum Island because it is a facility that you're, now, you're not Ventura, allowed on. Ventura, listen, Ventura never asked them to even get near it. They just wanted to be able to basically go over into legal waters. You're supposed to stay a mile away. And, and let me tell you, Plum Island's no joke. Uh, they have 36, because I was a consultant on that show. I sent them the info. 36 level 4 bioweapons labs. Uh, let me just shift gears, because this is important. Uh huh. Previously, they would have these things in the middle of the desert or on islands. Uh, level 4 are things like smallpox, Ebola, mm. anthrax, and... But worse, that, that's only level three. When they weaponize them or yeah. soup them up, supercharge them, they're now level four. Now, uh, just 150 miles or so from where I sit in Galveston, Texas, hurricane ravaged, uh, very dangerous place to put one. They have put at the University of Texas at Galveston a level four bioweapons lab. Black now, Mesa? get this, get this, in that's level life. two containment. Level two is just when you're dealing with, with like the regular, you know, seasonal flu or something, uh -oh. or, or 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 a regular cold. Now, why would they do that? Well, let me break that down. All right. They have they've spent six billion dollars in the last nine years on what they call BioShield, and even uh, the Washington Post, uh, the Baltimore Sun have reported that these are. Factories making bioweapons and developing bioweapons, but it was sold Turd. to Congress. It was sold to Congress as defense, uh -huh. and now all over the country, San Antonio, Turd. Texas. I mean, the list goes on and on. They have level four. Listen, yeah. level four is supposed to be three rows of barbed wire, minefields, machine gun nests, Mine and be field. at least and be. At, I'm not joking. No. Totally contained with a self-destruct system uh, to burn it out and three stories underground. Now, they've got level 4 behind little glass windows on the coast of Texas. Now, Lyme's disease, it's been confirmed was leaked out of uh, uh, there at Plum Island. Um, uh, the West Nile, those are just level three type things. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, this is a hardcore issue, these bioweapons, when you understand but that why, the Rockefeller like, Foundation... I don't understand why they're doing this. Why would they do that then? Well, let me tell you. What's the plan? What's the end game? And, and, and if you guys want this stuff, because I didn't know you were bringing up bioweapons, uh, I can send it to you. It's up on InfoWars.com. Just mm -hmm. just type in, type in Rockefeller Foundation uh, developed vaccines to sterilize. And we've got all the government documents, UN, Club of Rome, Biological Diversity Assessment, where the globalists openly say, mm -hmm. well, you guys know about uh, you know, Ian Fleming or whatever his name was that wrote the James Bond movies? Yeah. Uh, uh, he was a member of OSS and then MI6. Well, notice he wrote the book Moonraker. Now, 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 the movie Moonraker with Roger Morris, Cheesy, with Jaws and all the uh, rest of it. Of course. But you've got this elitist industrialist who's going to release a bioweapon to kill everybody on Earth, then they're going to come back to the planet and repopulate it with the super race. Now, all of that <clears throat> is based on real government plans, but they're not going off-world to do it. They've got giant underground bunkers that they've spent 
trillions of dollars on since the 1950s. Let me just throw one yeah, out. But, but you sir, heard sir wasn't, James, wasn't every James Bond a super criminal that was trying to do something to the world? <laughs> Like that's every no, I know. But what I'm saying is plot. that's true because the one before that, the spy who loved me, yeah. was trying to kill everybody so he can uh, populate the ocean. Goldfinger wanted to make all the gold radioactive so he'd have all the gold in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm telling you is a lot of these writers. He was a member of British intelligence. They 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 put scenarios that are being discussed or talked about into films. It's, I mean, it's kind of like The Wizard of Oz. I had a, yeah. a pretty big filmmaker on my show a year ago, and I told him, uh, you know The Wizard of Oz is about the gold standard and the silver standard. And he thought I was joking, went out and found out it's mainstream fact. Really? Uh, and, yeah, and he and, and he's now made a movie, The Secret of Oz, uh, about that that's airing all over you know, television worldwide. But the issue is, yes, a lot of things that you see in movies are basically – psychological imprints or images exactly. of what's really being developed. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants is about the Fed. The Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Listen, Open and it. Anthony. It's mind control. <laughs> mind control. They're using harp. We love Jesse, by the way. We love him back on the show. I can't stop watching his show. Yeah. I just We just want him to get in a little trap. <laughs> when we return, hey, have Jesse you guys seen the parody? Hey, 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 listen, have you seen the battleship? Hey, have you seen the parody? Oh, oh, oh yeah, it is with one the, of the funniest damn things. <laughs> hey, he's moving. I'm not taking a plane. I'm driving. It is so goddamn funny. It's that guy great. nailed him. It was really good. No, I can't. But it, but it, they really do over dramatize what Jesse's going to do, and then what really happens. Jesse Ventura faces a line of M16s as he tries to get into some of the most classified locations. Are they there? Yes, sir, Governor. All right, let's go home. <laughs> I was turning around so I could get more info. They want to shoot me. The show would be huge if he got arrested there, Alex. Tell yeah, him to get arrested. He's tell him to get cross the line. Well, I will time. tell you. I cross will tell you with another network. 51. Yeah, I will tell you with another network, and I can't talk about it till it comes out next year, oh. uh, early next year. But on another even bigger network. I was in, well, I'm not going to get into it. I was there when people got arrested, and I escaped. I had to jump in a river. Uh, so <laughs> oh, so someone did that. Is that turd? Is that one hosted by um, who's that hosted by? Uh, Gold Dust, <laughs> 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 the ultimate warrior. The ultimate warrior. Warrior says the conspiracy happens. <laughs> I am the warrior. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Alex knows. Alex knows the whole deal. Warrior says. Uh, warrior uh, says infowars.com. <laughs> we, we just listen want to here. Little... <laughs> listen here, warrior. I'm a governor and I like prisonplanet.com. I'm a governor. You working on any movies right now? <clears throat> what, documentary films? Yeah. Yes, I'm working on one, uh, a masterpiece that I've been working on for two years, dealing with eugenics. And, and let me just throw this caveat out uh, on a serious note, just for something that I know your listeners have heard about, because it did get some attention a month ago. Mm. Oh, Hillary apologizes. The U.S. government secretly injected thousands of Guatemalan men, women, and children with live syphilis on purpose and told them that it was a vaccine. <laughs> oh, you see... It, it was already declassified. They just announced it to 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 to, to act like you know. Oh, we're sorry, we got caught. You know, it didn't just end with poor black folks over 45 years being injected with syphilis, men, women, and children, uh, in Tuskegee. Uh, it didn't just end with 4,300 U.S. foster children radiated to death. Just a few years ago, New York Daily News reported that they were taking poor children in New York, uh, CPS was, strapping them down in pesticide studies and killing them. Come on. Child Protective Come Services. Come on. They're injecting right. Guatemalan kids with syphilis, wait, but wait. they're not They're not giving pesticides to little kids. Come on. Child Protective Services were taking children, strapping them down and spraying pesticides on them to see what would happen. No, CPS would take them and then put them in a residential uh, system controlled by Big Pharma, and they would test pesticides on them until they died. They would also test AIDS drugs on them until they died. Uh, New York Daily News. Alex, let me, let me uh, squeeze in for Let me ask you this question, because I'm, I'm, I, I believe in this type of shit, okay, mm -hmm. as we know, but 
okay, why do one thing if you're them? Why put it on memos to <laughs> classify or declassify? If it's like a, gr a room full of like 10 people, why not go, all right, you 10, we're going to do this fucked up shit, and then... If we get busted, there's no, yeah. there's no where to get caught. Just remember there's no, it. Don't write it down. Yeah, right. there's no actual <laughs> Put your fucking down. proof yeah. that we're going to do f terrible Put things to, to Guatemalan kids. Right, don't, don't tweet it. Don't tweet this, please. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like how many people are mm -hmm. involved with mm -hmm. doing something like, like that? Like, it, it can't be more than 10. All right, well, let me answer your question because this is key. Number one... I'm going to answer the question, but first I just want to say, it is public, it is admitted. People always say that, well, if 9-11 uh, could be an inside job, we would, you know, people would come out, people would talk. Sybil Edmonds, FBI NSA translator, broke her gag order last year. She testified before Congress secretly. She was listening to the phone calls with the CIA in command of bin Laden on 9-11. Let me go further. Fox News three weeks ago. Just search the term. Anwar al alaki or al-Qaeda chief, met at Pentagon two months after 9-11. This guy's on the news at the time any, uh, as the number three in al-Qaeda. Now, this is real. Check yeah. it out. Ah, as the starving. number three uh, of al-Qaeda, and it turns out he's hanging out secretly yeah. at the Pentagon. And let me go further. Uh -huh. Then the head of Pakistani intelligence, who admittedly wired the money to the hijackers, hanging out at the Pentagon the same time, hanging out at the Pentagon the day of the attacks. Okay, and the list goes, I can give you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Uh, but, but listen, they hide it in plain view. By the, by the way, this is why I don't plain believe view. in, this is why I don't believe in Absolutely aliens in Area 51. Yeah. Because I don't believe that the average Joe, which is a uh, some soldier that they said keep this secret and yeah. and keep on this. Let me go further. Can can keep you it, can keep a is, secret is, like that. Let me go that. further. Let me, I mean, secret. let me just drop total bombshells on you right now. Uh oh. Okay. Four months ago, Washington Post spy talk written by a former CIA agent interviews the CIA section chief, and he tells him, Thanks. he tells him, yeah, we made fake Bin Laden videos for U.S. television. Boom. Just search CIA admits that they made fake bin Laden videos. Well, I knew they were fake. They had linguists listen to the voice. It wasn't him. They did voice prints off the real bin Laden videos. They played them. It's all fake. Let me go further. You can search Fox News admits U.S. government growing opium. It's up 13 times. And they cut to Army and, 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 and uh, uh, Marine Corps brass saying, yes, we give them the fertilizer and help grow the opium. Now, it came out in Vietnam they were shipping in the opium. Okay? Look, th they're growing the drug. And so what do they do? They come out in the open now and just say, yeah, yeah, Al-Qaeda's hanging out at the crib over here at the Pentagon. Yeah, Alex, we're growing the smack. Right, let me yeah, ask you we're making fake videos. Yeah, we're taking the veterans' death benefits. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do Alex, about it? Alex, let me ask you this, though. In a hy hy hypothetical scenario, what is it going to take, would you imagine, for the people, for you know, all of us to go, oh, shit, this is real? Like, what could possibly happen... Like you're telling these these uh these these facts uh, that you can find, but what what could happen for everybody to go? Oh my God, this actually exists. Okay, well first other, do this. First do facts. this. What was the last <laughs> no question I forgot about? Shit. What was the what was the last question I forgot about? Why why won't why won't anybody like with these memos? Why do they why, make these? Why make memos? Why, why make memos? <laughs> Okay, I wrote that down. Now go back to the new one. I'll answer the new one first. The new one is what's it going to take? <laughs> what's it going to take? For everyone to go, yeah, that, oh, this shit is real. That it's not just like, one guy that uh, is, is no, saying like the, this the, happened. Like that, the people. The people okay, well, just to be clear, just to be clear, fucked up. Just to be clear, fucked up. Right. This is yeah, foul. We, we saw. We saw the guy behind the curtain. We finally saw. But it. people all wake yeah, up yeah. and it's like, we this is it. What's it going to take? All right. Well, let me answer the question, and I'm trying to write these down so I have them all here. Uh, you know, why make memos? See, he's and, making and, memos. And and and, and what's it going to take? Okay, let's go to what's it going to take. Do you, let me answer the question this way. Do you know about titrating the dose? Okay, so you're going to answer it by not answering it. No, I'm going to answer it with precision. Are you <laughs> okay. ready for this? What? What, a, what do snake handlers do? Uh, handle snakes. And what do they do in case they get bit? They give themselves small amounts of the venom, and they build it up over a few months until they can take a king cobra bite and not even bear, you know, get a headache. So right, it's well, the same. that answers it for me. No, no, this is going to answer it. Yeah. That's, 
Patrice says, what is it going to take? Okay. Well, they know that it's starting to come out because of alternative media, so they're titrating the dose. They're showing us the man behind the curtain, but saying he's nice. He brings us popcorn. They are they oh. are because the alternative media has shown the man behind the curtain because they can't deny world government or Bilderberg Group or eugenics or population reduction anymore. But they're now coming out and showing us more and more to acclimate us and to condition us through perception management to go along with it so that as it begins to come out that this is almost all staged, that 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 people will just be basically desensitized. Right, when it does it. finally oh, come gotcha. out, we'll go, eh, okay. Do you hear, do you hear like, uh, footsteps in lonely parking garages at night? Do you, do you, are you a paranoid <laughs> gentleman? Do you, are you always looking over your shoulder because of all this stuff? You know, that's a good question. And then I'll go back is. to the, uh, turd? Make memo uh, type stuff. Yeah. Um, imagine, I mean, I'm a syndicated radio host, just like you guys, and I, uh, and, 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 mm -hmm. and I'm somebody who, you know, well, I'm, I'm just trying to put you know, put you in my shoes because I'm also in your shoes. Oh. I'm somebody who goes out and gives public oh, nice. speeches. That's I'm somebody who, I mean, I do lock my doors at night because yes. I have children want to keep them safe. But, no, I'm the like opposite of that. I'm not a paranoid person. Yeah. I'm a realist, and I'm bold, and I'm a public figure, and I'm not living in fear. I'm challenging the new world order. And then people say, well, why haven't they killed you then? Because if they kill me, it underlines, it highlights, it puts ten exclamation points behind everything yeah. I'm saying. I, I think, think, if, they I think if they killed you, it's just another little bit of venom. That's all. That's right. Just a little bit of venom to make it a little easier to and get would, the big bite. It would bite. just be food poisoning or something, too. Yeah, yeah. It would be like, oh, it look at be that. An obvious his, killing. His brakes went out. Yeah, that's weird. Well, I'm 36, <laughs> and um, uh, so I don't think I'll be dying of a heart attack anytime soon. But, uh, you know, oh you do God, have I a good You're only 36? Yeah. Oh, God. What's up with the voice? Uh oh. A little too much Jack Daniels and Marlboro okay, Reds. At least, okay. The, the government's beaming uh, radiation into my throat. A warrior. I did too many warrior <laughs> imitations when I was seven. <laughs> uh, oh, look. The Drudge Report has uh, our story, top story again. Hmm. Yes. Which, which, one which, which one is that? I don't know. Drudge for seven days straight has his top story. But we did a story about Drudge actually stirring national debate over TSA abuse. Oh, I'd yeah, like to yeah. talk about that with you guys if you want to get into it. But first, I should... Uh, First, I should answer the question about my voice, and then I should answer the question uh, about... No, you answer the question about your voice. Yeah, well. Well, Memo no, 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 no. I mean, to be honest, I had a little bit of a deep voice growing up, especially when I'm being, you know, calm. I get excited. It's high. But I didn't I didn't ever take speech lessons or drama or anything. I didn't know, starting at about 20, when I started bullhorning, you know, different government officials and people that, oh, I'm screaming so loud that I'm coughing up blood. And so I've lacerated my larynx. Oh. And so I've been I've been to a doctor about it and they and they said you need to focus and speak from the front of your mouth, which I'm trying to do now, because if you continue to talk like you really talk from the back of your throat, you're not you're you're gonna sound like a dead toad by the time you're fifty. Why don't so you right just now keep... I'm having to consciously talk like this to not sound deep voiced because See, if I actually the talk the way I talk, voice. it sounds like this. How do you hurt your voice when you're talking out your ass, Alex? Oh, well, hey, whoa, hey, 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 that turn, gives me turn, two mouths. That gives me two mouths. That's one for you, attack weasel, uh, to put your well. face. <laughs> Why are you thinking about my ass so much? I don't know. Because I heard you're 36. <laughs> what happened? Was that attack weasel smart enough to me? Yeah, fucking Jimmy. Jimmy, Listen shut up. Listen here, boy. Goddamn Norton. I'm a Navy no SEAL. See? You're going to get in trouble with another guy, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm just joking. I like Jimmy. So where was he at? The memo? Yeah. We was at the memo. Yeah, the memo. Well, I want to know about the secret hearing, too. How does he know if it was secret? I, I get confused by that type of thing. Uh, what uh, now, which of the secret hearings? What are you uh, talking about? That, that secret hearing. You, with the woman. You with saw the about. woman, yeah. How, how do you know if it was secret? Okay, well, number one, uh, if you simply go you look up. she did it secretly in front of Congress. But they, it was memos. It had okay, to be memos. Not. But then it's not s a secret. If it, oh, it's look, we had a Perry, oh, look, we had a Perry Mason moment. Look, guys, we got him. Oh, it's Turd. Bugs Bunny here. Turd. Turd. Oh, hi. Turd. Hey, Matt, Turd. how you doing, Turd. Turd. Yeah. Turd. I got oh, you. Oh, uh, 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 Alex, is, uh, we, we got we, we to interrupt him. He'll, 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 he'll kick our ass. This guy knows what he's talking about. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's a fair question. If she did it secretly, how do you know, Alex? I know, but I'm trying to answer the question, and that's why the governor 
Twitter got mad. You asked me a question, turd. Now I'm trying to answer it. <laughs> All right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Alex, let her That's more like Macho Man, isn't it? Yeah, that was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh Infowars.com. It's gold. Yeah. They're poisoning us with Slim Jims. See? <laughs> well, See? actually, MSG isn't. Neurotoxin to the brain and an excitotoxin, <laughs> oh. but it's also addictive. That's why we put it in the food so you eat more, more, more and weigh 600 ah. pounds. Step into a Slim Jim. Wow. Hey, I like that. He, he knows Answer that. Answer the question, Alex. Yeah, okay. No, no that's right. No I'm dodging voices. now, even though every time I try to, you interrupt. No, you're interrupting with your own wrestling voice. Okay, I'm okay. I'm just trying to have some fun here. All right, Norton, all right let's Norton, get serious. Jimmy, shut up to let him talk. Uh, anyways, okay, let's get serious. Okay, how do I know? Because actually, you guys are right. I can see how that sounded weird. There was a secret hearing, and she went public about it. Uh, okay, Sybil Edmonds, along with Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, I've interviewed all these people, uh, and, and, and many others, the government said, we want to hear what happened on 9-11 from the NSA and FBI people. We want to hear what happened from the, from the FBI agents, remember, who all went public and said, look, we've got gag orders on us. From the closed sessions uh, of the uh, House 9-11 Commission, that was the first commission before the uh, Bush's 9-11 Commission, but uh -huh. happened in both. And they said, we want to hear what you have to say. And then after they would tell them what they'd seen, they'd say, you're now sworn to national security secrecy. You will be arrested if you tell anyone. So it was a way of, oh, tell me what you know. And it's like, okay, now you can go. And then, the, you know, the, the mob shoots you in the back of the head. But this, uh, is a, yeah. this is a political shoot you in the back of the head. And that's why six of the ten commissioners of the 9-11 Commission have now gone public saying the official story is a lie. And it was, quote, a Pentagon cover-up source, Washington Post. Now, Sybil, but how do I know about this? Uh -huh. Sybil Edmonds... Uh, FBI translator with NSA uh, transcripts listening to Al-Qaeda, and she's now broken her gag order. That means she could go to jail, but she challenged him. Eight years after her gag order yeah. last year, uh, she went public and said, look, I was listening to these transmissions. It was mercenaries dealing drugs and weapons. It was Al-Qaeda working with the CIA, the Taliban. It was bin Laden taking orders from high-level CIA this was insane, and that's what we get from the other whistleblowers uh, now. She was listening to these, and then Stratus Ivy and Able Danger, run by Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, and you know the Pentagon blacked out most of his book. He was at, he was running a, a, a Pentagon hit team, because there's dark side and, and, and light side, the good guys. They knew where yeah. bin Laden was, and where all these guys were. They were ready to kill him repeatedly. They were always ordered to stand down by the CIA and, quote, contractors. Now... Uh -huh. Why? Now, now in federal court two months ago, it comes out that what is Blackwater doing? Uh, they're involved in guns and 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 drugs and and trafficking all over. This came out in federal court. It's now come out that Navy SEALs. Wow. What the hell is that? I don't know. What, that's must have been on your end. Okay, yeah. that wasn't on my end. All right. Anyways, Navy. That's weird. You know, Navy SEALs have just been arrested in the U.S. selling hangar Oh names. my God! I've got to go get them. Not a Navy SEAL. No, no one gets left behind. And then what happened? Remember, Alex, I'm a Navy SEAL. <laughs> what is going on? And then, uh, has he answered one question? I'm confused. I don't know. This I totally this answered woman. your... Hold on. I'm I totally confused. answered your question. But, I totally answered your question. But, Lieutenant but, Colonel Anthony Schaefer, on record, they blacked out his book. But I can't... Okay, right. he I, testified in secret. <laughs> Sybil Edmonds testified in secret. She's Google now broken enough. her gag order. Sybil She's broke now broken bag. it. She's, that's how I know about the secret f meeting. Oh, okay. How about the memo? All thing? right, the memo, Alex. Thing. Like, the like, meaning, and the question is, why, why these memos that can be traced back to to classify or declassify when it's, uh, like you watch these movies and it's like, uh, like say a scene in good <coughs> in uh, Goodfellas where we all rob a bank and then and then everybody gets killed and then everybody gets killed or yeah like where they can just hide it instead. Well, that of did it. happen with Kennedy. Hundreds and hundreds of people who were witnesses of the grassy knoll, the people on the trains and the train conducting tower, all went bye-bye. All got, you know, multiple caps. Uh, just like uh, good old Lee Harvey Oswald, old Jack Ruby took care of him real quick. Now, uh, yes. now, now expanding on that, let me answer that question. We were once a freer yeah, nation a in certain respects. We were more unfree, but more free in other ways. Imagine the CIA is founded in 1947 out of the OSS. And, and I'm going to answer your question. This is how I answer it. Uh -huh. The CIA was founded 
And everybody said, you're going to let a group have billions of dollars and operate in total secrecy. Okay, they can't operate in the U.S., and everything that these uh, national security groups, not just the CIA, but now 16 other agencies does, it's got to be declassified every 10 years. Well, now they make it 20, or in some cases 40. They've, they've, they've reclassified the JFK assassination out to you know 2040. It was supposed to be declassified all of it next year. Uh, and so we have four year request freedom of information act but you know i sent mine off repeatedly the fbi wait a minute will wait a minute so in 2040 there's going to be papers that come out and, and kind of go all right this guy was up here this guy was we had six agents here we 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 uh, called off some of the some of the uh, uh the per, his personal protection yeah we had a so it's going to be uh, 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 some papers that's going to say all right here it is everybody yeah but but i mean let me explain that this is a bureaucracy with 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 millions of millions of employees, okay? Mm -hmm. And there are millions of people uh, involved in all of this, and, and, and it's basically all a psychological operation. Most people in government are good. Most people in private industry are good. I mean, they're not perfect, but you know they wouldn't do really horrible things. They have some morals. So they have, I've discovered from stuff that has been declassified. They they. You know, shoot pregnant women up with uranium and plutonium. That's declassified. They radiate small children. They spray nerve gas on U.S. troops in Project Shad and kill them and tell their families they died of the flu. Not to test the nerve gas. They can test it on rhesus monkeys or rats that have almost the exact same, uh, you know, uh, metabolic system. Uh, you know, if something kills a rat, it's going to kill a human. Where's something kills a dog, it's going to kill a human. They don't need to what, test what, it. What? The, the 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 reason they're what? testing. Chemicals. <laughs> yeah. The reason they're testing chemicals and biologicals on people is to create cadres and groups of psychopaths uh, who they know will follow orders and who they've already compromised so they can have them then go run even bigger divisions and then give people psychological questionnaires and things and then test them and see if they will uh, be involved in all this evil. I mean, here's an example of how they take a young special forces. What question are we answering? I'm so confused. Okay, where, you asked me about the memo? You asked me why they have memos. Yeah, yeah. yeah now we're and talking I'm about I'm telling quadrants. you it's because they've got a large command and control structure. Okay, all right. And just all like right, you guys sure. have probably okay. got a memo hanging up in the bathroom, you know, saying don't crap on the floor because I bet some of you do that. Well, actually, Listen yeah. to your show. It's a, it's about yeah. blowjobs actually. I'm just joking. <laughs> the point is, I'm sure exactly. You got to put a memo up. And uh so so that's the bottom line. Okay. And then I was explaining the psychology mm -hmm. of of how they take a young special forces captain who's 25 years old. We might not be as smart as this guy. No, I know. I, I well, he's I very well, dumb. well researched and but well read. Yeah, you're very well read, Alex. Well, I, but listen, guys, I'm not really that well read. Uh -oh, you know, right. Some people are experts on Harry Potter. Or they're experts on the Ooh, NFL. Oh, I like Harry Potter. Oh, Martha. Or, or they're <laughs> experts. They're experts in gardening. Listen, Can you it, can't listen. All this stuff is it. So much stuff is admitted. <laughs> Right. There are over 10,000 declassified <laughs> examples. You know how many times they've released nerve gas in the New York subway? 806. No, more than 20 times. Do you oh, know how many times nothing. they've released bioweapons in the New York subway? Are you kidding me? Now, how do people Turd? get away, away with that? Do they take out Listen, turds? you have a computer in front of you, right? Yes, yes. I do. <laughs> okay, just search biological experiments, New York subway, 1968. 68. 68. Oh, okay. I could buy it's 19. But, but remember, they only declassify this now every 30 to 40 years. But uh, yes, they probably yes. did. They probably it did. Makes it makes no fucking sense to a, subway lines. to class like it make to do some horrible shit that's secret, right? And then follow the rules of declassifying or classify. It just makes no. It's, no, it makes perfect sense if you're a psychological yes. warfare chief snake with 180 venom. IQ. Back to snake venom. Okay, now what the I see is handlers. Army germ warfare experiment in New York subway system. Now that could be uh, anything from dumping anthrax on people or Baby just powder. studying a group dynamic can no. actually... Now, now, no, we know what happened now, with now it. it. But it could be... They released a bacterium and it was a test... Uh, the, 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 the army doctors were told to I'm see starving. how it spread 
but but oh, it was I'm really ready. a test to see if yeah. they would go along with it. And they had army doctors posing as regular doctors in all the local hospitals, and then they didn't give people treatment because they wanted to watch them die. Damn. Whoa, Just like on. injecting little Guatemalans with syphilis. Oh, but the government wouldn't commit 9-11. Well, oh, and to keep this information is crazy. Like to, I know they do it, but it's like to keep this information. Let me go further. To just oh. go, like to just go. Memo? Hey, look, what, look going? at the, They keep it to go what? Like, hey, look, look at the shit we used to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, why even yeah, keep that as stuff. something you can fucking flash paper? Yeah, it's just weird to keep this info. It's like it's. How many people are involved with this this mess? You know what I'm saying? Many, too many people involved, I think, for to legitimately get away with this for so long. It's like I a, understand a, there have been no, 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 no. I need uh, to get to the key. There's definitely things that have been done by the government that have been shady and underhanded, especially during the Cold War. Absolutely, the key. but um, the key. I don't think it He's, goes as deep or as far as as uh, you and and the people that He's think gonna get like to you. The key, though, okay, and they get to the I'm key. for the key. The key is this: they are practicing total insane evil. Oh shit! Out in the open to break our will. You ever seen that HBO documentary about pimps and hoes? I oh, love it. And. Uh, the the woman's been run over by a car or whatever, and she's in the hospital, yeah. and she's all broke up. She's going, baby, baby, I'm on, I'm on, get back up on my feet. I'm on, get you that money. I'm on, do whatever I got to for you, baby. I'm on, whatever it takes. And and then the mother's sitting there going, what have you done to my baby? And then they turn to him and they say. Well, listen, how much do you pay her? And he goes, I don't pay her nothing. She's lucky if I give her some chicken once a week. Yeah. Because that's, it's it's really female psychology. So you're saying we're all just hoes. We're all bitches. We're beaten hoes. Hmm. With we're the beating same hoes, and so, and so they're urinating on us. They're going, huh, you know what? Uh, the Army's own manuals and the former mm -hmm. head of the DU program says if, if the troops inhale one micron of DU, on average it'll kill them in 11 years with lung cancer, and the troops are dying of mass in the last few wars. Our troops are now using it over there in almost all the ammunition. Oh, bender, 20 years bender. ago they wouldn't use it, but here on Veterans Day, I, I, you know, now they just say, hey, use it, and when you die, uh, what did Bloomberg report? two months ago that Prudential and other insurance carriers signed a secret deal with the VA 11 years ago to take the death benefits that, that, that troops have paid for, their insurance, uh, through the VA from World War II through to today and steal their death benefits and their widows and widowers are told, you ain't getting jacked. You know what that is? It's, baby, I'm going to get up on my feet soon for you. I just can't wait to get back to work for you right how now. They, how do they get away with uh, taking the death benefits? They just do it. How so do they get do away? Right. How do they get away? Taking ABC News with illegal aliens are allowed to go through TSA without being checked. How do they let illegal aliens rent aircraft without any ID? ABC News. How do they leave the borders wide open but say we've got to grope two-year-old babies and women and oh, squeeze Paul. their squeeze? No, no, it's now the enhance. It's always more, more, more. It's an act of submission. It's an it's hmm. the cult of worshiping jackboots and and worshiping but tyranny. But I said that, and oh, being, and hey, but Alex, slapped. I said this. I said this when I was on your Love show, Jack, man, it really is our fault. We we look at these yeah, people. We, like it. we we look at these people that do that to us as if they're not people. But we have to be willing to do that shit to each other. It has to be a guy willing to cuff exactly. a two year ba two year old baby's fucking nuts at the at the airport. It, it, this can't happen with just some old generals that make decisions. It has to be a fucking scientist who's willing to fucking. Make a bio weapon. Exactly, and that's the key. They're looking for their brothers. They're looking for their fellow psychopaths. They uh, may be they uh, may be white, they may be black, they may be Japanese. They're looking for fellow psychopaths. All right, how do I get in on this then? How do I get a, a, a guy? How do you get on the inside of this whole fucking thing? Well, I don't want to be on the outside anymore. I'll tell you the quickest way to get on the inside. inside. Help I'll tell you out. the quickest way to get on the inside. Yeah. Uh, join the Navy, get into the Navy SEALs.
Uh-uh. Uh, join the army and get into the Rangers, and then uh-huh. and then and, and then become a Green Beret. I don't think I can do that. Uh, let them know that you want to be corrupt. What are the hours? Uh, well, I mean, let me tell you. The, I'm, I'm, listen, I've Memo, had family. Listen, I've had family recruited into this. This is real. Yeah. You want to hear this? Yes, yes. yes of okay. course. So I, I hear it all. The, I asked right. the goddamn question. <laughs> the quickest way to, to join the New World Order as a on the ground drug dealing, true gangster murderer, yeah, uh, is to join U.S. Special Forces. And then they will psychologically profile you. And if you're a good guy, they'll oh. say, oh, oh, you're a good guy. And you'll end up going and doing good guy stuff. But if you're a bad guy, they will progress through. They will send you to Chicago or Miami like they did uh, one of Miami's my great uncles. And he, he got out of it. He said, he, they said, we want you to join the CIA. We're sheep dipping you as an army officer, as they call it. And next they wanted him to nar- narcotics traffic uh, and do even more serious things. Uh, uh, in Chicago, and he said no and got out. Most of them say no. Uh, but the the fastest way to join the New World Order is to get into special forces, and then uh, after you get sheep-dipped and are now working for intelligence, it's kind of like in the movie No Way Out when Kevin Costner says, who are these men? And they say, they're men formerly associated with special forces. Ah. So you'll basically be a killer in a suit, and, and, and then to really progress, they're going to say, all right, We want you to go down here to Guatemala. We want you to go down here to Nigeria. This minister didn't do what we want. We want you to go in, and uh, we want you to gut their children and and paint bloody pentagrams on the walls. And then if you go murder the children, you're going to progress up. You're going to have a whole hit team under you. You're going to have a house at Maui. Uh, You're going to be shipping coke in. So is this kind of like Manchurian candidate kind of thing? No, they don't need to turn you into a mind control slave. All they've got to do is find evil people that want to roll with the devil. Who are the people that pick the bad people? They're psychological warfare experts. Yeah, See, they got fucking they experts. I want to be one of those guys. I want to be above them. I want to. Can be- you do? Can you do fifty pull-ups in a row? Oh yeah. Why? Can you freeze? See, first they got to take you. First they got to take you off the farm. You have to be you have First they got to take you off the farm. First they got to take you off the farm and make sure you're an absolute badass who can sit there. So, you know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So the guys that wait a minute. So the old guys at the top used to be. And all Ma- they physical to maniacs, and, and they've just progressed into old dudes who know how to train physical maniacs. They're like World War II guys. Yes. In fact, you talked about Kennedy. I was actually given this three years ago, no. even before Rolling Stone uh, carried about it. Kennedy anymore. And, and, An hour ago we were. You're and, uh, oh, yeah. sorry. Well, no, no, but this ties into <laughs> it. You just brought up old World War II maniacs. What about the yes. memo? Love okay. That. E. <laughs> e. Howard Hunt, who is the. Did this e- I who love is that. the admitted? I mean, Ethan Hunt of Mission Impossible is admittedly named after him. Ethan Hunt, yeah, in that movie is named after E. Howard Hunt. Turd. Howard Hunt, one of uh, Nixon's guys. Yeah, admitted former head of Black Op overthrow operations. Can't play that game. In 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 World War II. Think at it. In World War Think II, he had over fifty confirmed sniper kills. Yeah. In 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 China against the Japanese, so he's a World War II badass. <clears throat> they take him in. He runs Black Op. Hit squads. He overthrows eleven separate nations, and he was. Uh, it, it came out in congressional hearings that they believed he was the black op commander. Badass. He sued back in the eighties and lost over all this. Now, before he dies, he did a video, an audio, and a written interview, and said, "Yes, I was the backup commander." And he went over the people that were even more, you know, badasses from World War II yeah. and, and, and Korea. They were the frontline hitmen. He was the backup guy. He even got arrested that day at Dealey Plaza uh, in the, uh, you know, he was the tramps with all the guns and the boxcar, and they were ordered to release him. Uh, and it's E. Howard Hunt, you know, photo there. Hunt was in, the, in that uh, group. Uh, e. Howard Hunt gave a deathbed confession and admitted they ran the whole op. And by the way, speaking of conspiracy theory, that's going to air uh, not this Friday, but next Friday. Yes, I know. I saw that one. Uh, I, well, I saw the last one on Wall Street, and I saw the um, We've got the a confession. Trailer. Yeah. Ah, oh, I like when he walks in on all the people on Wall Street. Aha! <laughs> I got you. I got you. Too much fucking info, man. It's just got to be like one thing that we all got to like kind of got to follow. Like, it's just too much Detail. Okay, here's one thing you can do right now. One uh, fucking one thing, thing where, we could all do. where you could start people off and go, yeah, yeah. look at this, and this will get you going. Give man. us the kindergarten of uh, what we can do. Okay. Ten years ago, 
15 years ago, I was interviewing top toxicologists, former EPA scientists, current EPA scientists, people who were concerned. Over 90% of the EPA scientists in 2000 and 2005 wrote letters, their official union voted, to say sodium fluoride in the water reduces IQ by 10 to 20 points, it doubles bone cancer, it is a chemical weapon, take it out of the water, and it damages teeth and causes dental fluorosis. The same unions have come out and said that bisphenol A in plastic is feminizing men, making girls go into puberty early, and massively increasing cancer because it's a female hormone. It makes women more female, makes men feminine. Now, people always laughed at us about that. Now, four states have banned it. It was engineered through a U.N. agreement. They have thousands of different combinations of ways to make plastic without it. Almost all plastic that you drink or eat out of, and when you microwave a TV dinner, it's bisphenol A plastic, it off-gasses it in, you know, into your Salisbury steak and mac and cheese. And this is why we're so obese. You know, the food ties into it. This is why we're so unhealthy. It's why diabetes is up by 3,000%. They have put soft-kill chemical weapons in the plastic and in the water, and everybody can start realizing this and start filtering your water with a sp special type filters that actually take the fluoride out. You got There's different types. You have to check it, though, because all filters don't do it. You can stop e uh, eating and drinking out of bisphenol A. Uh, you can realize that GMO crops in every study, just search uh, GMO corn causes organ failure, it just you, every major uh, variety. It's engineered in by design. We are being soft killed right now. That's the biggest issue, and it's covered my film, End Game, Blueprint for Global Enslavement. It is free on YouTube and Google. Just Google End Game, and it's the top link uh, there. Please, gentlemen, please. And there's an online bibliography, whatistheendgame.com. Whatistheendgame.com, and everything I say in the film is documented on that website. Gentlemen? I wonder why they weren't interrupting. I guess it just cut off. Hey, are you guys there? That's kind of a joke. <laughs> well, see you then when we come back. I'll take a break. Turd? <laughs> Turd? What? 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 Turd? What? Turd? What? Turd? What? Turd? What? Turd? What? What? Turd? <laughs> What? Turd? What? Turd? What? Now go home and get your fucking shine box. <laughs> Turd? Hello? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Whew. I'm exhausted. That was so funny. But what about the memo? Gen gentlemen? <laughs> what about the memo? But did he ever answer that question? I'm really confused. Well, let me, let me go back 20 years. What? I mean, he, you know, he does what he does. He does what he does. He does his show. He gets a good audience. It's very controversial. That's what you got to do. But, man, it doesn't seem like anything that's ever happened in history is just what happened. You know? It seems like everything was some kind of concocted plan that is uh, full of secrecy and intrigue.
A lot of... Baby! Yeah, back to the music. <laughs> Seems get a, like there's get a lot back of... on, please. I feel... What? Oh, I got the, the chills. Yeah, that was good. Oh, a lot can't of, get him back on? A lot of people are really pissed. You fucking well, I, assholes. He's oh, giving you real answers, but you don't want to hear it. But, but everything's a fucking joke to you, too. Cut the fucking shit. Everything's not letters. a joke. Sorry, fatty well, pubis well, in North Carolina. Well, North Carolina. Fatty pubis is mad at us. Don't today. worry about it. We had fun with him. We listened to him. We, uh, we you know. He did He did we show. I tell you what. He, I, he, I've never... As much as I listen, I've never heard him have a sense of humor like that. Like I didn't, I know. I didn't know he was fucking Those impressions. Like a, like Am I still here, dude. guys? Ah, he's back. <laughs> yeah, we had. A, oh, hi, Alex. We had we, a little problem a there. Problem. Hey, did that get out on air about the bitch fiend all laying the water? Uh, and, no, no, not no, at all. We lost. Wait, you where were about, we at? We lost you, Jesus. About. <clears throat> I'm trying to think the last thing. It, Six oh, minutes oh, ago. Oh, you asked the question, what can, uh, something simple. Yeah, yeah, what, what can terms, we what, do? What can we do? And that do? entire five-minute rant, I was wondering why you weren't interrupting, didn't get out. Oh, okay, yeah. here's the deal. Bisphenol A is in almost all plastics, and when you cook the TV dinner with the... Show. Show. Anthony. Anthony. On the virus. Sirius XM. <laughs>